and we're live. We did it. We did it. We were we were chit chatting right. about the wild stallions, and we're live now. <laughs> so for people who usually watch my channel, there's generally fairly serious fare here. Today we are actually going to educate and engage in some enjoyment. We're going we're gonna have some fun today. Well, I'm gonna have some fun. I'm I'm probably gonna give I'm probably gonna give Trevor an aneurysm. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm 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 not that drunk yet. 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 The, the night's still young. <laughs> Cheers. We're going to have some drinks and we're going to go over an article I found and it's oh, going to be amazing. So if you're in the live chat, say hello. Let me know that you can hear us and also sends rule and Toronto sub. Really? Yeah. You started <laughs> off with that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No shit. Look at the background. Set the tone. Yeah, and, I, and I still maintain the big. Yeah. That that's the number of cups you have in the NHL. <laughs> you know this is an O, Trevor. O, the letters and numbers are different. Yeah. O, ought, zero, not, zero, goose egg. Okay. You know what? This is already not going well. This is already, I I'm already sorry. regret mm -hmm. that this, this is a bad idea. Yep. It's fine. Yep. Hey. It's fine. We'll, we'll, you we'll you wanted to throw out the hockey shit, so. <laughs> we'll do the best we can <laughs> with what we have available to us, which is Trevor. Hi, Trevor. Why don't you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> introduce yourself to everybody and tell everyone who you are and where they can find you <clears throat> well my name is trevor valley no, i had to do that sorry so i'm trevor valley i'm a paleontologist and science generalist and a whole bunch of other shit uh normally you can find me on twitter and instagram at tattoos and bones um yeah basically uh i've been uh i've been around a bit i've dug in i've lost count i think it was something like 48 different fossil localities worldwide i did eight weeks in siberia for the national geographic channel for my own documentary mammoths unearthed i've been on the history channel discovery channel weather channel g4 the joe rogan experience um the shannon q channel the shannon q Your channel whole of life has been building up to this for the record dun 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 <laughs> Um, yeah, I've, I've been around a bit. I'm a, I'm a speaker at Nerd Night uh, across the nation. Um, I've even done like body storytelling. I've done a lot, man. I'm, I'm, yeah. And you go to Dragon uh, Con, and now, which will feed into what we're talking about this evening. Yeah. Oh, God, that's right. <laughs> that stupid article. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And yeah, I do also go to Dragon Con. No, wait. No, McAfee, don't do a security scan right now cancel there we go um i could just see that my surface has been like going to hell lately <laughs> i've i've brought it back from the from the brink of death about six different times and it's like i want to do a virus scan while you're on a live fucking video podcast it's like no ah okay no i'm good <clears throat> this is so trevor. yeah that's me hi trevor's here because he and i uh, fight on twitter about trevor and i met constantly <laughs> We met awesome. trolling Ken Ham in AIG. That's how we met, <laughs> like almost two years ago. And then we bonded talking about booze and drinking and beer <laughs> in Canada. And well, how yeah, because we're both Canadians. Yeah, I mean, there you go. <laughs> Ta-da! And how annoyed we were with people misrepresenting pseudoscience as science. And oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm kind of known for that, eh? <laughs> Jesus. Sometimes Trevor gets a little heated, so everybody get a drink because I'm about to piss him off. I, <laughs> I just... thankfully, thankfully, you gave me the article ahead of time, so I've kind of burned most of it off. But God, I want to slap this guy. Oh my gosh, I I almost shouldn't have. I thought about it, and I was like, no, I'm gonna give him an opportunity. I'm gonna let him see what I'm doing to him. Because I know you'll yeah. still get heated anyway, and I, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think I need the real-time escalation. But I tweeted about it yesterday, jokingly, just jokingly. And I was like, I'm going to talk to noted pseudoscience, Illuminati, shill, fake scientist, <laughs> Trevor Val. <laughs> because the article that we're going to be discussing, wait, guys, it's amazing. It's just, it's, 
It's incredibly insightful, and it's about the uh. myth of dinosaurs and the reality of dragons. I'm going to present it so that people can see it above us. This oh, is the yeah, article we're going to cover. And people thought I was serious. I saw that. <gasps> and I mean, and and ironically enough, when we're like when we're doing this talk about like actual source verification and like uh, and knowing instead of believing and stuff like that, that holy crap did did anybody actually click on your profile and like scan through your your feed like i i feel bad about that because it's like some of them were probably my followers because i retweeted you right and i'm just i'm kind of looking i'm just when when i was reading your post i'm just like wait what people were just like oh you're stupid and they just like block it's like guys it's like you you follow me right <laughs> you, you know that if you're going after a target, you have to do research on the target. I mean, it, d derp. What the <laughs> hell? What were you think? What were you thinking? I like, didn't think what it I want you to do. <laughs> oh, if anybody did, if anybody did that, that follows me, all of you that did that, you owe her an apology <laughs> because you were not using your scientific brain on that. I mean, yes, sarcasm is different, difficult on the internet, blah, blah, blah. But come on. If you click, you look at the profile, atheist, and then some of you were like, I can't believe she's an atheist. It's like, dude, scroll down a little bit. <laughs> Just like read the feed. So yeah, if if any of you that follow me that are watching this did that to her, you owe her a fucking apology. All right? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I expect, I'm sorry, Shannon, on Twitter, here <laughs> on YouTube, all that, you know. I didn't think anybody would ever think that that was serious. Like maybe that's on me because I was, I'm used to I mean, my followers, <laughs> but I have like over 12,000 followers too. Right. And most people knew that obviously I know dinosaurs are real. So I didn't think anybody was going to everybody. I thought it was so obvious. I was joking, but the, and then I woke up this morning and people were like, you're a moron. I'm ashamed to be an atheist if you call yourself an atheist. And I was like, what just happened? Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. That, it's okay, just, though. That, that, it's that, Twitter. That's a collapse. <laughs> but I mean, it, it teaches uh, people about source methodology. Like, don't right. take anything at face value. Don't take anything at face value. And never just think that this is an opportunity to feel like you're better than somebody else. Just because right. they're well, saying I, something that is obviously wrong. That's, you know, that's not always the best hack. It's like, it's like, folks, you're not six anymore, remember? Don't judge a book by its cover. I mean, come on. I, I mean, yes, the, the internet is full of one post idiots that are just like, climate change isn't <laughs> real. Ha ha ha. Or mm -hmm. the moon, the moon landings are fake. Or this, that chemtrails and Tesla thinks the earth is flat and all that bullshit but like their entire feed just says that <laughs> it's like when one per it's like i wonder if, like in a week when people forget about this because yeah. for some reason the human nature is like goldfish um even though that myth isn't true goldfish actually have a good memory but whatever um I may just throw out there someone's like, you know what? I've been thinking maybe the earth is flat and just see what happens. It's fascinating. Like just watching people immediately go to visceral reactions, like because it's not right. something I experienced. And I was like, to me, part of my process, and we'll get into the article in a minute, but part of my process, it was like, wow, this is what it's like to experience being wrong, like just overtly wrong you, right. and thinking right. you're right. You're not met with welcoming people who are saying, okay, like, I, maybe we could talk about this. Maybe, like, let's, you know, engage in a conversation. Immediately what I was met with, giving people the benefit of the doubt that they actually thought that I thought that, was, you're stupid, you're a moron, I hope he owns you. I, and then just uh, other things that I'm not actually going to say on this channel, but especially considering I'm a mental health advocate. Um, and. Right. Oh, I saw that one. There was oh, a couple. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> there was yeah. one that I saw. I'm just like, really, dude? I've <laughs> I got a blue puzzle piece tattooed on my arm. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, and and that's the thing. Like, and 
I feel, eh, I, I, I was going to say I feel partly responsible because they're my followers. No, you're not. And they, they see me blowing up and immediately going to tail and immediately just like fists up, let's do this. But that's because I've actually done methodology and researched my target. Right. You know, every single person that sends me a link, it's like, look at what this guy's saying. I'm like, okay, let me see what he's saying. Let me see what he said about other things. Let me do a quick Google search, see what's going on. All right. No, nope, this guy's kind of a po. He's kind of, he's, he's just a troll. He's just being a dipshit and eh, whatever. And there's other guys. It's like, oh no, this guy has an entire fucking college website, radio station. What the fuck? I'm like, all right. Yep. You're on. Yeah, let's which, do this. Which is what you did with this guy, actually, the guy that, that Mr. Armstrong here, who we're going to be talking about. You actually went. You I, looked more in depth than I did. You were telling me shit about him. I that knew. I, I knew a little bit about him from other avenues. Oh, okay. A very small amount because he's a very, very hardcore Trumpist, right wing kind of nut bar. Right. But then you sent me this link. I'm like, oh my god, it's Ben Armstrong. Of course it is. It's so bad to Trevor. Little I mean, you the, know. I mean. Oh, I, the, the, this guy does everything from like Q dog whistles to um, alt, alt right, alt white fucking dog whistles to climate change denial and all that. It's like he, he never because he likes his platform. He never goes complete dipshit. Mm -hmm. But this all the things are there. It's like, shit. <laughs> this is total. <laughs> yeah, this, this is this is he went complete dipshit. But but other things, it, it's just like, you know, his, I'm, his I'm not... excerpt, it was an excerpt from his article that I screen capped about. <laughs> we'll get to it. Right. That's right, what got right. me in trouble. People thought I wrote it and lost their shit. We should get into people, it. People, yeah, do a little bit of target <laughs> reconnaissance. I mean. Yeah, I have certain skills in a previous life that I do that well. But, I mean, come on. It's super easy. Right? Like, just, just click like, on my YouTube channel and look at it. Right? Before, right? It makes me feel like there's a certain subset of people that feel as though they can garner a feeling of superiority by just, you know, picking on the people who are clearly and overtly and obviously wrong. Like, you, you are not superior because you know dinosaurs are real in some disillusioned potentially like disturbed person doesn't that doesn't give you an air of superiority you shouldn't feel like that gives you an air of superiority and if you do you certainly shouldn't attempt to capitalize on it like what right. th that's that's not a good way to you know live your life but you know i mean i can understand apparently i am exceptionally good at portraying myself as a moron, and that's a skill set that I'm putting on my CV from now on. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, yeah, I mean, can look like an idiot quite easily. Like, I, you more. do root for the sins, so. Okay, let's I go. Mean... We're gonna go. We've had enough of this. People, we're gonna just, I'm gonna start reading this article. I've had enough of your shit. Go for it. I am done. <laughs> We're done. So if anybody has questions, we will take questions. If you super chat, they will get read so long as they are not ga garbage or attacking people. But I never have to worry about that because my audience is phenomenal. Uh, we are going That's to drink cool. and it, drinking is encouraged. So, what are you drinking, by the way? Like a this, big ass Long Island iced tea? No, no, no. Actually, I ordered a, a vanilla bean vodka from a local distillery that I'm mixing with Diet Coke. Mm. And fascinating yeah it's it's really good it just tastes like you know those vanilla cokes that you could get it, it tastes like oh, yeah. that and uh i have a backup drink which is a lemon iced tea cooler from the same local distillery because i knew you were coming and i knew i'd need at least two drinks to, to oh, get through yeah these. i mean i've i've got my whole bar behind me. i can just reach up and <laughs> like, know. and if you start ranting i may just go get another one and come back and just <laughs> Well, yeah, oh, absolutely. It's like I keep looking back. I'm like, wait, do I have? I think I've got that Dave Keo Maple Leafs whiskey back there. Um, oh, never mind. Sorry. Okay, what was that article? By the way, nice use of the metal straw. I appreciate that. Save the turtles. Yep. I absolutely always use metal straws. It's so so easy. Why waste when you like? Don't. I'm a weird mm -hmm. hippie. I don't even own a microwave. I'm that weird a hippie. All right, you ready? That's pretty fucking weird. It's uh, not. I, mm. It's Are not they weird. ready? Because People, everybody's oh God, tuned in to watch me and you fight like brother and sister. They don't realize it, but that's what you're gonna watch. For the I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, hit me with your best shot, damn it! 
we just, like are people watching? All right. Wait, wait, what, what's that Rick and what? Morty thing? Show me what you got. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. yep. Swifty. Let's get Swifty. We're about to get Swifty. All right, let's go. That's it. Okay. We're gonna read this article. Are you ready, Trevor? Down it. Let's go. Yeah, just no, just I'm making sure that I'm swallowing before I do a spit take all over this like very expensive <gasps> okay. fucking webcam. The myth of dinosaurs <clears throat> and the reality of dragons. Oh God. <laughs> do you realize that dinosaurs stop me whenever you need me to are just a theory? Well, right <laughs> there completely screws up his entire thing. Because he's doing the standard creationist trope of Take evolution's just a theory. It's just a theory. Blah, 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 blah. Because he doesn't know what the fucking word theory means. They all think it means brother. guess. They're just a I theory. mean, it's like, yeah, a theory that is backed up by very shaky evidence. It's like, that's the next line, by the way. I have it, it open on my, on my thing, too. <laughs> Are um, you following along? But, but <laughs> I am. I'm just, like, scrolling. A theory but that's just the means thing. that it's something that's proposed, Trevor. It doesn't mean that anything's proven it. <laughs> you know that's not right. Trevor. Um, the, I know, the, the, I'm saying the <laughs> definition of scientific theory is a well-substantiated example of a natural phenomenon that is backed by tests, evidence, facts, laws, and all of that. So a theory, not a fact, not a hypothesis, not a law, a theory is the ultimate in scientific in the scientific method because they they govern laws and facts and all that. The theory is the pinnacle. And just that opening line, when I read this article, I'm like, this fucker's done. It gets so much oh, worse, though. Oh, it, it does. It totally I does. I hope I'll, everybody's I'll you... here for the long run because we're one sentence in and we've been at this. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, here we go. All right. No, I'll just buckle I'll let up. You roll. No, no, it's fine, Trevor. Yeah. Wait, what do the they Trevor say in, in Jurassic Park? Hold on to your butts. <laughs> a theory that is backed up by very shaky evidence. Most people believe in dinosaurs because they are taught in schools about them. Rarely does a school teach the children that dinosaurs are just a theory and not, not a proven fact. What I'm just, if I'm going to let you roll? <laughs> you need to stop me when you have something to say. No, 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 no. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to get I'm going to get worked it. up. I absorb may, it. Let me go grab that whiskey. Yeah. Let, let it let it let it sink in. What if Let's I were to right. tell you the dinosaurs are actually a myth? A myth. I'm going to let that I'm going to let that one You're go. Let that one go. That <laughs> That very statement will cause many of you to laugh. Not me though. I I didn't laugh. That's because you have been taught that dinosaurs were real and you never challenged that belief. I know this. <laughs> he knows why you believe in dinosaurs. <sighs> okay. I know this because if you challenge that belief, you will not conclude that dinosaurs are real. You will conclude that dinosaurs or only a theory. So this was written, by the way, by Ben Armstrong <laughs> at WSAO, uh, sorry, WSAU.com. Uh, ben Armstrong is a, um, well, he calls himself like a radio host and he always speaks the hard hitting truth and all that shit. But wow, man, already, already, Ben, you're fucked. You're oh, so fucked. It only gets like, worse. I, I know, and then we're, we're, two, we're two paragraphs in. <laughs> I know, it gets and so bad. Yeah. Oh, it gets so much worse. That's just, oh, it's going to be... That was, that, be those were his strong yeah. paragraphs. <laughs> That's oh, no, where he made one. the most cogent points. <laughs> right, right. It's, it's only a theory. You've never challenged it. It's only a theory. I know. It, well, it, it's not even a theory. It's, I mean, it is a fact, and we do have a theory of dinosaurs, and all that but you know just like the theory of gravity and special relativity and general relativity and all that but it's the next group that he actually goes into this specifically and i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait for this next and this isn't a theory before... apparently <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna wait for this next uh paragraph and then i'm gonna rip you just this let me know when you need me to one. stop okay uh yeah <laughs> the long recorded history of dragons of dragons 
has been swapped out by the theory of dinosaurs. When did this happen? Well, it all started in recent history. 1842, to be exact. <laughs> keep, keep, keep going. <laughs> Before 1842, everyone, everyone referred to everyone. these. Everyone. Everyone in all of the world, in all of history, up until 1842, referred to these fossilized bones as dragon bones. Even Robert Plot, that discovered Megalosaurus in 1677, thought it was a dragon. Everyone. Sure. Yeah, except Everyone. for Robert Plot. Yeah, or William Buckland. Everyone. Trevor, your reading comprehension is really starting to upset me. Or, okay. Before 1842, everyone referred to these fossilized bones as dragon bones. Did you even know that? Did you even know well, that? The, the Chinese referred to them as dragon bones going back 2,000 years. True. Mm -hmm. uh, the Greeks thought they were some sort of mythical creatures, thought that mastodons were humans because of the way the teeth looked and because of the leg bones and arm bones and all that. And that's actually where we get the myth of the Cyclops um, is because of mastodon bones. When you, look at a, when you look at an elephant skull, mastodon skull, mammoth, anything like that, without the skin on it, the large navel cavity, nasal cavity in the middle, they thought that was a central eye instead of the nose. They thought where the tusks come out were the big bulbous nose and where the eyes actually were, were the ears. So yeah, when you didn't know to consider that, oh, maybe it's a big elephant. Yeah, you make shit up. But like I said a minute ago, he's totally and absolutely wrong. Because before, he says before, 18, uh, before 1842, everyone referred to these, these fossilized bones as dragon bones. That's not true. Robert Plot in 1677, found a massive thigh bone, parts of a jaw, a whole bunch of different shit, and looked at it and went, mm, maybe that's a big person. Maybe it's a big lizard. I don't know. And then they kind of were lost to time till 1815 when William Buckland rediscovered the, the, the cache of bones and went, huh, what the hell is all this shit? Well, that kind of looks like a really big lizard leg and part of a lizard jaw. Well, it's actually kind of looks like a massive iguana. So they called it a big lizard. They classified it, um, William Buckland in 1824, I think it is, described it as Megalosaurus, really big lizard. And in 1822, the Mantells discovered a series of fossils that they thought looked like a very large iguana. So they named that Iguanodon. Oh, so cool. this whole, like, in 1842, nothing existed before that, nothing was found before that, and if anything was found before that, everyone was call calling it dragons, is absolute, complete bullshit. He could have figured that out by Googling and reading an article on Wonderopolis or something. This, this guy's a complete tool. He's just, I, I think, mean, like, counting on the fact that that's where the actual vernacular where somebody utilized, first utilized the actual word dinosaur was like well, that's what i'm gleaning from that and i could be way wrong because i know nothing about the background but that seems to be well, what the, he's relying on is somebody well, yeah, invented this yeah. word then yeah keep reading keep reading okay so it's like did, yeah it's like one name one man i read named it but Sir i cried Richard through Owen. it <laughs> So but I, okay. in the next paragraph, he's right. One man named Sir Richard o uh, Sir Richard Owen created mm -hmm. the term dinosaur in 1842. Right. Dinosaur simply means terrible lizard. All right. Understand, cool. no one in all of world history believed there were dinosaurs before 1842. Spoilers, you're getting ahead. Okay, let me get no, on. I'm, 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 reading. I'm reading it. Dinosaur simply means terrible lizard. Understand, mm -hmm. no one in all of world history believed there were dinosaurs before 1842. Everyone believed, everyone believed in the historical, the historical evidence of dragons. Everyone. That's because almost every single, every single cultural, it says every single <coughs> cultural around every single the cultural. world. Every single cultural around the world yeah. has historical evidence of dragons. You can That's check out this article from BBC. Sir Richard Owen, the man who invented the dinosaur. And yeah, and, and you are right. That is what he's doing. Simply because yeah. somebody came up with a word. Right. Doesn't mean that, that since that word exists now, we know how to classify them. 
So here's no one knew what the fuck a Labradoodle was until you crossed a Labrador and a poodle. Right. And then he had to come up with a fucking word. I mean, it's a Labradoodle. I mean, ta-da. It's like simply because somebody is describing it as something new doesn't mean that it automatically defaults to some mystical bullshit in 1841. I mean, I have explained through dates, names, and references that people thought these weren't dragons before that. They thought the Megalosaurus, the Iguanodon, and all that were different, big, huge, prehistoric, ancient reptiles. All they were missing was going, oh, wait, so what do we call a big fucking prehistoric ancient reptile? And then Sir Richard Owen's like, oh, why don't we call it a dinosaur? Means terrible lizard. Okay. It's like, what the fuck, dude? It's like, Ben, Ben Armstrong, you're a fucking moron. I mean, because that that is a really stupid hill to die on. And again, you can look up the dates I stated very easily very easily doing a little bit of search doing a little bit of you know i don't know what is that target you know <laughs> little bit of fucking research and you could just oh god what they don't want right, to do so research starting, though and they count on other people flustered. not doing research too because they want people to believe them just because they they pull out a fact a fact is that this word was first utilized at at this time and then they build a narrative around that they build well, the narrative uh, yeah. that the only reason that this word existed is because, you know, science was being co-opted by the, these people who are counter to Christianity and they don't want you to believe in the Bible. And then it, it like all, all of this stuff, like it comes in later in the article. I'm not making that up. That believe me, that comes in. But they build narratives oh, around yeah. these small actual factoids so that when people look at it, they see an actual factoid and they think that that means that everything they think that follows from that factoid is also factual and people don't yeah. actually bother to go and do some sort of source methodology to find out that yeah, it's, it's crap. It's pure confirmation bias. Yeah. And it, it really shows up in this next sentence. This next sentence is beautiful. Oh, it's so funny. Book. It's so bad so fast. Uh, it is interesting that after this term was created, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the first dinosaur discovery happens in 1858. Because if they discovered anything before 1858, they would never have called it a dinosaur because the word didn't exist. So, exactly. <laughs> So it's like, of course it did after the word was invented. Of course, after the word was invented, they discovered the first thing where they would label it with that word. Duh, right. the word didn't exist. Right. Sorry, and, story and, thunder. Yeah, but, but no, but that, that's exactly true. And it's like he's, he's building this amazingly rickety straw man argument on this. Mm. I mean, what are now known as dinosaurs after the term was coined mm were discovered way before that. They weren't called dragons as he so, you know, religiously, and there we go, explains. But sure, after we have the fucking name, after Owen goes, hey, let's call these terrible lizards dinosaurs. The next one found is like, hey, look, Owen, I found one of your dinosaur things. <laughs> Check it out. And then everything else before that was like, oh, wait, so these things that Buckland described and the things that the Mantells found, and the things that Plot found, and all of this, holy shit, they're dinosaurs. Cool. Now we can lump them all into a name because we can actually describe something. I mean, so according to his logic, until the word human was coined, until the word human... Until in the classification, Homo sapien sapien. Until all of that, were there no humans? Yes. So instead of, you know, a, a motorcycle being called a velocipede, uh, does that mean motorcycles didn't exist before the term motorcycle was made? Or the term, you know, what about car or automobile or plane? It's like, this, it's, this is such a stupid straw man argument. And it really shows his, you know, logical capability yeah. in this. Because simply it's like, oh, so nothing existed before that word was invented. Okay. Baseball. 
soccer, football, hockey, anything like that. Nope. Curling, sports. <laughs> it just, it's, it's mind numbing to think about that this is his angle of attack. It, it is, <sighs> if you're a reasonable person. Because, it, well, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's essentially but, saying, because this word was created, there's a conspiracy built around it. And he's using that right. as a pivot point for his narrative, which is right. trash. Once you understand that words are utilitarian and the only reason that we employ them is because they have agreed upon meanings that we can all collectively understand. Otherwise, mm-hmm. they have no use. Like I could say, blue, sh- blah, 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 blah. that doesn't mean anything. And the only reason it doesn't mean anything, because it's a collection of sounds. It can be phonemes and morphemes, just like any other word. Well, of course. But it doesn't mean anything because nobody has assigned any meaning to it. Sounds are right. sounds. The sounds I'm making have no more meaning like intrinsically than any other sound that I may make. The only reason that they have any meaning is because somebody else has agreed that they have and understands what I'm attempting to convey when I make those sounds. So he's, I studied communication. So this is the part of it that just really infuriated me the most, right? (laughs) Because I was like, you asshole. Like somebody invented a word to better classify something that previously didn't have good classification because we understood more about it and realized that there wasn't an, an appropriate designation that we could all use to articulate so that we could understand what we were talking about when we had that when we when we looked at this group of things and, right. and created a word so that we could utilize it because words are, are our bitch like they have they have a utility that's why the word was created because it was a necessity because we needed that utility that's why the word was created it wasn't created right. so that people so that we could just convince people in perpetuity that 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 dragons weren't real and dinosaurs are because we somehow mm. wanted to convince people that the Bible does, like it's fucking insane. Anyway, we'll keep reading. Yeah. Deep breaths. I'm getting more angry than you, and I didn't anticipate that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been down this road a few times. <laughs> I thought for sure that I was gonna be like the calm one, but uh, that was a mistake. All right. <clears throat> um, is <laughs> is it interesting that after this term was created all of a sudden the first dinosaur discovery happens in 1858 Philadelphia that Academy movie. of Natural Science member William Folk excavated the first so-called so-called dinosaur the first one never before it was a nearly complete skeleton only missing its head a Wrong. Lip- <laughs> A little fact. Uh, Go ahead. mm, Go ahead. Hadrosaurus fulci was actually discovered in 1838 by, I think, John Hopkins. Um, And then Folk heard about it, later came back in 1858, dug out the rest of it. And it wasn't actually described um, until Leyde described it in 1858. And it was described not just because of the skeleton, but also parts of the skull that were found. Oh, so they actually did find the skull? So the rest Parts of this of it, is just yeah. crazy. Oh wow, yeah. it's even yeah. more crazy. I thought he was, I thought he was pivoting on the fact that the skull wasn't found in order to make no. these points, but there was parts of the skull that were found. Oh, absolutely. Um, oh, it that was, makes the rest oh, of this God. even more bananas. Um, I'm trying to think. They found a complete. They found limbs, uh, limbs, pelvis, lots of vertebrae. I think like 28 of them. Um, teeth. Sections of the jaw. Um, jaws are, I so, last I checked, jaws are in heads, generally speaking. Yeah. Part of the cranium, like a big chunk of the tail. And yeah, so I mean, it wasn't like fully complete except for the skull. No, but it was a large chunk of, uh, it was a large chunk of critter. So they didn't have and, a fully intact skull, but you wouldn't anticipate no. seeing that anyway, generally. Like no, that, that that's actually, rare. that's, it's exceptionally rare. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, he's wrong on that date too, and he's not the one that described it. Uh, Joseph Letty did, and it was found in, uh, Haddonsfield, New Jersey, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, then the rest of this is just crazy because what he extrapolates oh, yeah. from the skull not being, not being found is bananas. Okay. So the first so-called dinosaur, it was nearly complete skeleton, only missing its head. 
a little fact that indicates that man killed this animal. Only men, when killing an animal, take only the head. Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. You, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. That's right, Trevor. Listen, absorb it, drink it in. Wow. E eat these facts, Trevor. I, f I forgot that that sentence was in there. Right. <laughs> yes. The skeleton. <laughs> And then he's, the skeleton resembles many early drawings of dragons, interestingly enough. No, it doesn't. Because every culture has different types of dragons. Which dragon did it represent, Ben? <laughs> Guess what? None of them. Many of them. Many. It says many. It didn't say mm -hmm. all, Trevor. It says many. Which one? Welsh dragons? Chinese dragons? Um, oh, wait. No, every culture. Egyptian dragons? Oh, wait. They didn't have any. Um, South American dragons? Oh, we didn't even know. No, no. Uh, let's see. The Aboriginal? No. Aboriginal Australians didn't have dragons. They had, like, big serpents and all that. Yeah, no. So every culture has dragons. No, no, they don't. And it looked like many of the... No, no, they don't. So, yeah, Ben, you're a fucking idiot. He's relying on ambiguity because- Of course he is. Yeah, because most people will, most people who are reading this, most of his reading audience is going to be able to visually represent internally, like mentally visually represent what a dragon is and understand to a certain degree that there are analogous properties to what they understand a dinosaur to be based on their exposure to both to, fictitious yeah. though both they may be right uh, i mean i i'm i'd like to ask him which dragons they represented because if you look at a hadrosaur's limb bones they don't have what would be wing bearing limbs i mean you don't have you know the radial ulnal uh grouping you don't have uh, a keel uh, you don't have anything that would actually support wings because you need large pointed breast bones in order for the musculature to attach to. I mean, look at a bird, ta-da, um, or a bat, ta-da, um, because I, to say that, it's literally just... He's just throwing shit at the wall and hoping something sticks, and right yeah. now everything's sliding down because he doesn't even have his dates right. No, he doesn't need I mean, to, though, because he's not counting on anybody looking into it, which is why it's very important that when you read crap like this, when you read anything that you're like, huh, you need to dig deeper. You need to yeah, advocate no, you, for your own understanding. You can't. You just have to read. understand source methodology. Yes. Yeah, it's like, and, and the thing is, he has no references in this article whatsoever. Zero. Like there's, yeah, ex <laughs> like, like, like the number of cups of the sins. Um, hey, They're those there. weren't. Yeah, yeah, those were not during the NHL. They were year. Stanley Cups. Don't. You... Yeah, but not not NHL Cup. I need you to simmer the oh. fuck down for a second. We're talking about this article. <laughs> Go ahead. No, you, but it's it's the same thing. He, you're you're absolutely right. He is building this straw man argument, hoping that nobody will read. Yes. And the few that do read, I mean, of course, those are the people that will never read him again. And it's like, okay, but no, this guy has to be taken down, I don't know, a few pegs in an order of magnitude because he's an idiot. I mean, the sheer fact that all of the, see, now I'm starting to get heated. <laughs> yeah. All right, cheers. Um, yeah, um, but, uh, I'm still on my first. Damn it. Two. Cheers. Uh, he's, oh yeah, he's. Ooh, yeah, Ben Armstrong, you and me, bud. It's Let's do this. Bad. And like um, the the paths he's attempting to lead people down are essentially just believe things on limited information because they're moderately affirming and we can pull out one factoid that backs that up and don't bother looking further and right. that makes you skeptical because you're questioning. But right. it's but that's not the case because you're not Quite, to be skeptical, you have to not only be questioning, but also ardently and honestly and meticulously seeking answers for the questions that you have. Not right. simply saying, I have questions and thus I'll accept whatever is presented to me that's outside of the mainstream and that means I'm skeptical. There's a, there's a vast differentiation and yeah. he's relying upon that because he's appealing yeah. to people's skepticism. Well, taking advantage of their confirmation bias 
in order to make them feel as though they're being clever by affirming something that right. is it completely invalid for no reason I mean, the, other than he said well, so and it's bananas. Yeah, you know, the only controversies we've ever had about the hadrosaur, whether or not it's a biped. Lady, when he described it, he made it a biped that would occasionally be on all fours when everyone else was like, eh, no, that kind of looks like a quadruped, dude, that may go bipedal when it needs to. But no, he thought it was like, like the old classic uh, view of, mm -hmm. uh, of a hadrosaur and other dinosaurs. That's the only real big controversy about those things. I mean, there, there's much wilder controversies going on about other dinosaurs, but yeah, Hadrosaurus, it's just, it's like a duck-billed plant eater. It's like, it's like. All right, let's get, let's yeah, keep going. Gonna, all right. Only not men to the, all the Hadrosaur you. folks out there. It's just not a cool dinosaur. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting my foot down. Hadrosaurs are not that cool. Wow. This is really controversial. I wasn't prepared for that. This is a lot yeah. to take in. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. But to make the skeleton look bigger when it was on tour, how do you make it look bigger if it wasn't there to begin with, by the way? Interesting question. Yeah. Interesting well, question. Well, so the pseudoscience of paleontology, we add plaster and... No, I'm kidding. No, I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't. I really can't do that. <laughs> right? William Folk stood it up on its hind legs in a T-Rex no, position. No, lady did. Lady did that, not Folk. Folk found it, and then he immediately called Lady and went, uh, dude, I have no fucking idea what I've got here. Can you come and help? That's why Lady described it, and Lady made it bipedal, and everyone else was going, that's totally a quadruped. It's like, what fucking research did Ben do? Wait, I know- None, zero percent <laughs> is the answer like, to that like question. A finger came down from heaven and went, ding. He Trevor, searched. <laughs> ben did zero research. All he looked up were dates, and he got those wrong too. <laughs> he mean, searched the ter he searched when was the word dinosaur create invented or created. It, yeah, that, that's it. And, and then, then like first dinosaur found. <laughs> and yeah, and he wrote like, an article. <laughs> and people are like, I'd "This really makes sense." I am woke as hell. Like, wow, I'm super right, skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god mm. i really wish i had a real paleontologist here to talk to me about this so that he could make some <laughs> but i'm glad you're here it's nice that you could make it all right so oh, yeah no just just yeah the obvious big paleo shill <laughs> yeah i mean whatever that's fine I'll get, you take what you can get on short notice in these times all right william folks stood it up on his dug up a <laughs> In a T-Rex position, if this skeleton had been found just 17 years earlier, before 1842, it would have uh, been concluded that those were dragon bones. Trevor, what a difference yeah. just a few years can make. <clears throat> Even though, again, plenty were found before the name was coined. Those were dragons. Of course, even though they weren't referenced as dragons in any way, shape, or form. I mean, fuck, people knew dragons were mythological. I, so does Ben, Ben apparently doesn't think that, you know, the Renaissance occurred or anything like that. Or, uh, wow. Do they think there was dragons in the Renaissance? Because they probably not. did. Because if they found no, bones, they, they were dragons. And also, we'll get to it. Those bones weren't really, those weren't real anyway. <laughs> so don't worry about it. <laughs> because he undoes all his fucking points. All right. Sir Richard Owen, who created the term dinosaur, was an evolutionist. Dun, dun, dun. He was an evolutionist. Fucking yeah. evolutionist. Many in the science community at this time were trying to disprove what the Bible taught. That's what they were doing. That's, that was how they did science. That was their goal. Yeah, he doesn't really know that William Folk was the son of Quakers, does he? No, well, Ben doesn't know that. I know that. He doesn't. They were trying to undo the Bible. That's every scientist, all, all scientists in all of the world that come to conclusions that mean that the earth isn't 6,000 years old are essentially paid by big science 
in order to counteract the Bible. And if you can't recognize that, then I don't even know how to talk to you. They wanted to prove that ev- <laughs> they wanted to prove that evolution was true. They found out that many in the scientific community embraced the same goal because obviously they're all being paid. Besides, it was a good way to make money. See, called it good way to make money. It's huge, right? Scientists, especially like paleontologists, are essentially millionaires because they're uh, pe- George Soros is paying them to make sure that people don't know that the Bible is really yeah. the truth. All paleontologists are millionaires, of course. Yeah, every <laughs> single one of us. Yeah, that's why I'm like still waiting for my surplus check in this quarantine. And I'm on a third floor apartment in East Hollywood. And yeah, what the fucking Muppet. Oh, God. Think of the billions of dollars the dinosaur industry generates today. That one made yeah. me the most mad. The most mad. Well, you know what? A lot of them made me the most mad because what is the dinosaur industry? Are they talking about media? Because media, like paleontologists, would completely disagree with the representation yeah. of dinosaurs in media. Ardently. I did an entire talk on Instagram about that last night. I know. I mean, like, what the fuck? I, yes, there is a private sector of, I like to call black market paleontology or commercial paleontology that people go out and they under sometimes very clandestine, very false fronts go and excavate dinosaurs in order to sell them for a huge amount of money. Sue, for example, uh, at the field museum, but that's not how it always goes down. And if, if you figure it out, if you ask, actually ask most paleontologists, we, we tend to use, even though we're not archaeologists or grave robbers like Indiana Jones, we tend to use the line, it's like, that belongs in a museum, because it fucking does. When a fossil goes into a private sale, it becomes incredibly difficult, if not highly improbable, that any scientist will, any paleontologist will ever get to describe that or measure it or take photos of it or do anything to actually compare it to things that are in public institutions also if if the fossil business was so lucrative why are places like the american museum and the natural history museum the smithsonian and all that and the british museum the london museum why are they free why, why are these museums free sure there are some museums that charge like natural history museum of los angeles county um but a majority of museums are free or the charge is ridiculously small and yeah, I, I don't get this guy. I mean, I mean, I do get it. He's using a very well-known anti-science trope of, of they're the enemy because they make lots of money. It's like, oh yeah, well, go ahead. Look at my fucking bank account. Well, no, we don't make tons of fucking money to the point where I have to manage a bar as a second job because paleo work is so few and far between. This this argument is such bullshit. And that's where a lot of this dinosaurs don't exist bullshit starts is because they don't understand how a museum works. They don't understand what it takes to actually get something into a museum and that most museums are nonprofit. All they look at is the secondary black market, the commercial market of fossils and the fact that Honestly, unless you're a researcher, no, you really can't go into the basement. But that doesn't mean everything on, you know, on display is fake. It doesn't mean that everything is, is, uh, I just. Uh. They're relying on media <laughs> representations on, on, on scientists and like media yeah. representations of scientists and of the industry and, and of these fields to inform people how they should think about them and playing on that yeah. in order yeah, yeah. To, to make an appeal. And so if ridiculous. you're a fan of Ben Armstrong and you're watching this YouTube broadcast, guess what? You're an idiot. And he knows that. <laughs> and he's preying on you. And he's preying on you. Because Go give him money. Don't give him any money. Instead, <sighs> he doesn't provide you any links so that you can go no, do your doesn't. own research because oh, just, ask yourself why 
Yeah, he just forms an opinion and throws it out there. And by the way, contrary to popular knowledge, opinions can be wrong. <laughs> the whole thing, well, it's just an opinion. Well, your opinion is wrong. If an opinion is based on faulty knowledge, faulty facts, or in any way, shape, or form, a worldview that is proven to be false, guess what? Your opinion is wrong. Cheers. Period. Demonstrably. I mean, this, it's th this whole what's the harm in thinking that dinosaurs are fake? Well, a lot. Because one, they're not. They're categorically fact. Two, there are people that scrape together a living doing it. Three, it's fucking history. There is an entire world. I mean, humankind is a fucking geologic eye blink. It's like if you take all of human history, everything we know from the latest SpaceX landing to the moon to the first powered flight to when humans started like as homo sapien, not homo sapien sapien, which we are now the mo uh, anatomically modern human, but the last 200,000 years of human history, if you were to stretch out the entire time frame of this planet for an 88 foot ribbon, all of hu human history is the thickness of this fucking piece of paper. That's it. That's all. We are an eye blink in the geological history of this planet. We're just like the new cool species on it. The Mesozoic era ran for 186 million fucking years. You think you're cool? Dinosaurs have been here a lot longer. And by the way, they're still here because birds are dinosaurs. So when you think humankind is all high and mighty because we get to do farming and we get fucking technology and all that, one virus has almost brought us to our knees. Imagine what happens if an asteroid impact hits or a solar flare or a gamma ray burst or anything like that. We are on this tenuous fucking pudding like lithosphere of this planet scared of earthquakes and tornadoes. We got nothing. We just happen to be the, you know, the, the latest insect to hit 7 billion population is like the, when more people realize that, not like people that actually understand what I'm talking about and people that follow you and me that get it. But I'm talking about the people that think, oh, well, you know, oh, dinosaurs are boring. They're just dead skeletons. Yeah, well, that animal ruled this fucking planet for millions of years. We're not even a quarter of the way there yet. It's, it's mind-numbing. See, the secrets of the past are keys that open the doors to the future. The more we learn about the past, the more we learn about what could possibly come. Different extinctions, different times that, I don't know, nearly the entirety of life on the planet were snuffed out. There are so many things we can learn from history. Dinosaurs and protozoans and fucking geologic record. These people don't fucking get it. And they think it's just a fun little thing. It's, it's the current conspiracy du jour to say that dinosaurs are fake or that trees don't or that mountains don't exist or any of that bullshit. And honestly, every single one of you, fuck you. Because the moment you decry history, fine. History, things like dinosaurs don't exist, fine. Okay, sure. Not a fucking problem. Uh, how about the entire history of the Middle East? Everything that you're basing your ideas on. Fuck it. We're living in the now. Why do we have to worry about that? It's just, you, it's a slippery slope. You can't decry one and, and not embrace the other. You can't only go history 6,000 years and not go 6,001 to 4.5 billion. It's, it's completely disingenuous. And you should go fuck yourself if you think that. Ta-da. All right. You make me smile. <laughs> Could be because I'm drinking, but I don't know. Probably. I don't like usually drink. I, I like it that you're here because I get to drink. Yeah, drink until I'm pretty. Oh, you are pretty. I guess I should stop. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking As I it. vape like a dragon. Oh, my I'm God. Nervous. And it gets worse, too. Like, it gets so we're not even to the point that got me canceled from atheism yet. <laughs> oh right, right, right. Yeah, that's right. We're we're in the middle of reading an article as I'm going on this five minute diatribe on how discounting history is stupid. 
They're all very valid points. I hope people clip them out and like put them on their channels that are like people go. that people listen to. People, <laughs> I have like a baby channel. I have almost like twenty thousand subscribers, but like people Does get that to hear you have this one stuff. of the cool. You have like a cool play button. I do not. You need a hundred thousand subscribers to get a cool play button. Oh, I very I much doubt that I will ever get a cool play button. Yeah. But I don't, that's I don't okay. know how YouTube works. That's why I'm not on it, except for things like this. <laughs> I have, uh, it's a cesspool. I have this cool thing, though. Before I keep going, I'm going to show you, because a, a viewer made this for me. It says Shannon Oh, that's Mitchin. Isn't it amazing? And as always, help elevate the discourse. Yeah. Right on. It's, that's very cool. And it lights up. They made this with their own hands. This is This is better than any play button. I will ever get. I I I don't. I life. have to agree. I, I have keep to it agree. on my desk and I look at it frequently. Sometimes when I've, I'm getting weird because I've now had two <laughs> drinks, but sometimes when I'm like, wow, like everybody's being super hateful and this is very complex and it's very difficult and there's so many things to manage. I look at that and I'm like, somebody cared enough about what I do that they made that for me and they sent it to me. And I'm that's like, awesome. I'm like, it's worth doing. It's worth it's Good worth on doing. You. It's worth doing. I'm gonna keep doing it. That's that's what's valuable. Carry Speaking on. of keep doing it, get back to that article. Oh my god. Did I feel a feeling in front of you accidentally? I'm sorry. One second. No, it's okay. <laughs> History. Folks, folks, we we rip on each other all oh, the we time. Do, yeah. Don't, worry Don't about take it. any of this it's, personal. Yeah. That's that's what almost got me canceled on Twitter. We are deeply and passionately in love. We, we, except for like Paul. Um, well, we're both in love with Paul. I, well, uh, yeah, <laughs> totally. That was that was that was so cool. I have to say, doing your doing your uh, podcast and doing um, uh, ham and eggs was two of my favorite things I've done Aww. in a long time. Yay! Yeah, I'm having a great time here and doing just seeing animated me with the neon green beard and all that. That was just so great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was that was a hell of a lot of fun. Oh, that's so good. Because Paul was like, "Should yeah. I animate the beard now? <laughs> should I color the beard?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck yeah, you should." Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have time to run any color into it, or I would have. It would have been Maple Leafs blue. <laughs> I accidentally reacted like I was okay with that. That was on me mm -hmm. because I was anticipating that you weren't going to be the worst person. But okay, so <laughs> history before 1842 clearly states that dragons existed. Clearly. <laughs> How do you process that? Clearly states. Clearly. 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 Of yeah. everything before 1842. Everybody was like, Avi, there's dragons. Eight, eight, 1841, <laughs> fucking dragons. 1842, nope, no dragons. Oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, okay, they're dinosaurs. All right, that makes sense. We just will forget what dragons are in our mind. All right, uh. one... <laughs> One culture, this this started to piss me off. One culture still today laughs at Western scientists when they proclaim these bones are dinosaur bones. That culture is China. And this made me mad because China is not a culture. It's a country. Mm -hmm. They He should have said, this is the Chinese culture. It would still be fucking wrong, but yeah. it would have been almost grammatically correct. And I'm dyslexic. I shouldn't be correcting you. But... That culture is China is just incorrect on every metric you can utilize. That's why the countries of China and, and Mongolia both have very, very stringent fossil recovery protocols to the point where, one, they definitely know they're dinosaurs because they know what they have. For example, Vos Velociraptor mongoliensis found in Mongolia. Uh, um, there's tons of Chinese dinosaurs and they call them dinosaurs. They celebrate that they're dinosaurs and they stringently uh, secure the fossil rights to these things. Like there was there like Tarbosaurus, for example, is a, is a Mongolian T-Rex uh, Tarbosaurus patar. So um, it, I think it's pretty sure it's Mongolian. Um, it, it's from that area. And you cannot sell those fossils. One guy was busted hardcore because a Tarbosaurus went up for auction and they found out that it was smuggled out of the country and they flipped out. Yeah, not a dragon. They understand what their dragons are in mythology of being celestial creatures and all that. But no, they do not think and Chinese scientists do not think that they are dragons. There are... Chinese medicine aficionados 
we'll get that. that yeah they still grind up the bones and do all that kind of stuff and that inf- impacts the fossil uh recovery uh part of things yeah. but it's not it's like they don't they don't think there are not many chinese there's not an entire culture that thinks that fucking dinosaurs are dragons this guy's just basically shitting into a bowl Mm -hmm. and dipping a pen and writing writing on the wall with his shit i mean at at this point he's like fucking renfield in in bram stoker's dracula it's like can i have a kitten please and it's like oh yeah i'm i kind of feel bad for his wife and four kids his four kids. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I, yeah, I feel and as though and they're getting and they're and they're homeschooled. So they're getting this as an education. Christ. This is the big problem with this, ladies and gentlemen, is that this is being spread to children. This is a problem. And he's he's relying on an understanding or, or like a mass recognition. And understanding is a poor word to use for it, but a mass recognition of cultural stereotypes to reinforce this as Mm -hmm. people he he's he's hoping that people will understand uh, that relate to him that you know uh, chinese i'm gonna say chinese culture not china culture is regressive Mm -hmm. and they they hold sort of archaic belief systems he's hoping that he can use that as analogous (sighs) to like place on top of his assertion that they he's hoping that it'll seem reasonable to you because you have a stereotype that they have these sort of regressive archaic beliefs on the whole and that that translates to their scientific endeavors and that it makes sense to you as a result of that because you would see that the potentially archaic beliefs that may be the case in a subset of chinese culture yeah. as informing their scientific endeavors because you translate both of those as being analogous and right. recognize that one of them is air quotes true when right. in fact it may very much be a niche in the same way that people like him in American culture are a niche and I certainly as a North American wouldn't want somebody to represent this asshole as what American culture thinks of science. Right. I see the, t- I see those two as analogous. Does it like, if that makes sense, Yeah. like he's relying on that and yeah. I don't like it very much. And he continues, it gets worse. All right. So many Ugh. scientists in China today, mm. caps lock. So I, I've, feel like he wanted an emphasis there believe that these fossilized bones are dragon bones china also has the largest recorded history of dragons our scientists want us to believe that the recorded history throughout china is simply fantasy but did you know the number one place for our scientists seems weird why is it our scientists now all of a sudden to yeah. find so-called dinosaur bones is in China? Nope. <laughs> nope. That is because more dragons lived in China and <sighs> India. All of a sudden, India's in there now. Yeah. And, yeah. and India than anywhere else. So it makes sense that this would be the first place to find dino bones. Yeah. I can I can only think of like the number that keeps sticking in my head is around fifty mm. dinosaurs. Uh, fifty different species of dinosaurs have been found in China. That that's it. I mean, a lot have been found there, yes, but uh, fuck tons have been found in Western North America, mm. uh, Argentina, Antarctica. Um, you have some in England. You have them in Africa. You have them in South America. It's like the dinosaurs are found fucking everywhere because they inhabited a big ass planet for 186, 189 million years. Just saying that, no, all the newest cool ones we're finding are from China. Absolutely. But not all. Archaeopteryx, that was in Germany. Tyrannosaurs, um, well, Utah Raptor, Utah, Utah Ceratops, Utah. 
ty- uh, tyrannosaurs, Hel- the Hell Creek Formation in the Dakotas and in uh, Montana, Triceratops, Stegosaurs were found in Arizona. We've got Brontosaurs, Brachiosaurs all found. You've got the Argentine Saurus, one of the big ass long neck sauropods. Yeah, that's that's garbage. That it's like the new cool shit is being found in China because mm-hmm. China is looking at it as a boon. Mm-hmm in order to get them on the map of fossil discoveries. But they don't think they're fucking dragons. But they're and investing in excavations and analysis. Yeah. That more because than anybody then else. that Yeah, they well I wouldn't say more than anybody else. But to um, a degree that pre- maybe that they degree. didn't do pre- previously. No, I think it was no? like 1990. Mhm. Um why is that sticking No, is 1990 is Sinoceratops maybe? I don't, it's 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 relatively new chinese chinese dinosaurs are relatively new but the thing is once you find one you keep looking in those spots and you find more yeah it's like you don't you don't find like one albertosaur when you're cruising around alberta oh i've seen the albertosaur i've been to the royal time oh, a couple yeah. times and black albertosaurs are red oh black beauties and Bitch. tactolic yep um but I mean, we found some really, really cool shit like the dueling dinosaurs, which is a velociraptor and a uh, protoceratops literally clasped in a death pose. Oh. Since they're clasped in a death pose because a large sand dune buried them or some other gruesome thing while they were dragons. So where is he getting off on this? You can see bones... Like Black Beauty, for example. Black Beauty is in a classic death pose. It's all like, fuck, because it died. It doesn't look like a goddamn dragon. It's like, it's like where, where were the dragon's wings? Where were the limb bones? Check this out. On a Tyrannosaur. Tyrannosaur. Mm-hmm. How could those stubby little stupid arms, which could, like a single bicep curl is 600 pounds, but that's beside the point, how how would those connect to wings? Where were the wings on this thing? It's like, what a dipshit. <laughs> what an absolute dipshit. I don't know why you don't respect his in-depth research into both your field of study and the Chinese culture. And <laughs> it's staggering yeah, to me. Staggering. But we'll continue. Uh, The Chinese believe that dragon bones, this one pissed me off because I knew what it meant. The Chinese believe that dragon bones have medical healing use and actually consume dragon bone powders. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are they actually like grinding down fossils? Not the Chinese, but very, very small groups. Yeah. Very rural groups of Chinese medicine healers still do that. They're also the people that like you know, grind, grind down tiger bones and pangolin scales and all that. Yeah. Um, remedy, natural remedies do indeed cause a lot of friction between paleontology and that, but it's not this huge, massive problem. It happens occasionally. It sucks. Sure. But it's not, it's not like the end all be all. And a lot of them are like, Oh, Hey, you know, these, these, these dinosaur bones, Maybe the dragons of our culture were actually dinosaurs. Think about that, Ben. There's plenty of Chinese medicine practitioners <laughs> that think of dragons as these big phantom celestial beings and that dragons were actually dinosaurs. So the complete reversal of what the fuck you're saying. If you would do a modicum of fucking research, you would figure that out. But you didn't. You just... Opened no. up your pants and shit on a fucking laptop <laughs> and, and your, your fucking sentient fecal matter typed out this long-winded fucking blog post because you, you tell the truth and you have the hard-hitting opinions. No, you're a dipshit. All God, right. I hope he sees this. I'm going to tag him on Twitter. <laughs> oh, MG, I just found out he had a Twitter account because you told me because I tried to find it because <laughs> I was like, I need this man in my life. Because <laughs> I use source mes- methodology and reconnaissance on my targets. I wa- yeah, I wasn't that interested in finding him. I just winky I just winky. Searched- 
<laughs> Our scientists have proclaimed that those bones are prehistorical and cannot be used as medicine. Yeah, good. Like, wouldn't you want to research them even if they were dragons, you asshole? Like, anyway, mm -hmm. there is an actual conflict. Yeah, I would imagine between the two cultures. And no, I don't think it's between the two cultures. I think it's between a subset of the culture who still hold to those methodologies and don't respect right. the science as relevant. Um, read this article from the Associated Press back in 2007. Chinese eat dinosaur bones as medicine. I yeah, but like please, please note that the article title is Chinese yeah. eat dinosaur bones as as medicine yes in the article it does say it's like they believe uh they spent decades uh i pulled it up they spent decades digging up bones they believe belong to flying dragons and using them in traditional medicines turns out the bones belong to dinosaurs and now scientists are doing the digging and Ta -da, that's, that's like the first fucking sentence and uh, and here here's the thing um uh let's see it's uh talking about oh uh, uh, where um, uh, Dong Jiming uh, is a scientist talking about it. he's like Dong was part of a team that recently excavated in Hainan's Ringyan country a 60 to a 60 foot long plant eating dinosaur that lived 85 million to 100 million years ago. The find was shown to the public Tuesday. Dong said that when the villagers found out last year the bones were from dinosaurs, they donated 440 pounds to him and his colleagues for research. If they still believe they were fucking dragon bones, yeah. they wouldn't have done that. They looked at them and went, oh, fuck, they're dinosaurs. These dinosaur scientists should probably have these. Guess what, Ben? The article you linked to completely ruined your entire fucking argument. Oh. <laughs> you fucking moron. That happens so frequently. It's Did he even read the article? No. Did likely. he read the article? He seems, he seems as though he Googles finds a fact and builds a narrative around it. Googles finds a fact and builds a narrative around it. And is just hoping that him providing links is going to be enough for people yeah. to go, oh, well, he provided whatever yeah. and just continue along believing his nonsense. Yeah. Because Very I don't much, understand how yeah. anybody can see this as nonsense. Like, it's still, it's incredibly baffling to me. And it still baffles oh. me to this day. I work on trying to understand it. But how somebody can read this and go, yeah, obviously. It's just his, his own, the, 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 one, the one of two articles he posts his links to. Mm. Um, so, yeah, slight misomer. He does have two sources. Both of them prove him wrong, um, oddly enough. Uh, I mean, and I am quoting directly from this art, 2007 Associated Press article that I pulled up on my phone right there. Dong said that when the villagers found out last year, the bones were from dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. So that means they didn't think, oh, fuck, they're dragons. It's like Ben didn't read the fucking article. No. All he did, he looked at the first paragraph. Villagers in central China spent decades digging up bones they believe belong to flying dragons and using them in traditional medicines. That's my source. I'm going to fucking do that. He did not use source, me source methodology and read the rest of the fucking the fucking article it's like if you're gonna try and put forth a you know any sort of opinion that has any sort of factual basis read the fucking article you dipshit especially if you're gonna link it right. not like he has any other references and the references right. he does have refute him it's just like but that's the thing the two references he bothers to put in refute him as you said and as i said but where did all the other shit come from where is he where is his reference saying that china is the most number of fossils found where is he saying that all cultures have dragons where where are all these references he's not he's using a single reference yeah. and then he's extrapolating from that yeah. oh but if they have it everybody must have it what no he's relying on no. collective cultural understanding Right, which actually doesn't fucking exist, for the most part. I mean, yes, the, we do have we do have collective cultural understanding, but in things like this, no, there are plenty of the, cultures. The, it's not a not source of factual there. information, though. It's Correct. it's not it's Correct. not a way like there is such a thing as collective cultural understanding, but like there's a collective cultural understanding that dragons are a thing, and and like if if you say 
picture a dragon in your head and I, and me and you both do it, we're going to get something similar. Like it, it, or, And we draw it on paper. We're probably going right. to come up with something similar. That's a collective cultural understanding. Right. Now, if somebody asked you and me, are those dragons real? We're both going to go, no, obviously not. These are mm-hmm. mythological figures. However, we both understand through our collective cultural understanding that these are mythological figures and this is what they look like. He's relying on that collective cultural understanding in order to he's extrapolating upon it he's expounding upon right. it he's saying like yeah, you I, understand that these hour are a thing because you've been exposed to it through your existence in this culture and because yeah, you mi- understand that these mm-hmm. a- are a thing i'm able to co-opt that to fit the narrative that i would like to deliver so that you can avoid the information on this thing so I'm going right. to fit that in here and j- just tell you all of the reasons why you should mistrust the stuff that you heard before. Right. I'm I, Unlike Ben, being a scientist, I admit when I'm wrong, I misspoke. Mm-hmm. Instead of cultural, you know, uh, collective cultural understanding, what I meant to say was collective cultural belief, mm-hmm. like D- same cultural belief systems. Right. That's where I was going with that. Um, but, uh, what you said, of uh, actual, once, once you start speaking, I'm like, oh yeah, duh, you use the wrong fucking term, dumbass. And hey, Ben, I fucking admit when I'm wrong. Um, you don't, <laughs> um, God, I really wish he was watching this right now. Oh, he won't. Do you think, I don't think he'll not. ever watch this. I would like him to, but I also don't. Oh, think when it, when it, when it's, when it's finally posted on, on YouTube, I'm going to tweet the shit out of it. To him. <laughs> it will be within like 10 minutes after it being done wonderful <laughs> hey. the link's active immediately but it d- tends to take about like between 10 minutes to an hour to process um hooray <laughs> oh god i'm not sure if i'm afraid or excited maybe i think I, we have what six paragraphs left and right like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna go we're gonna go yeah. i like our like back and forth though because you understand all of the paleontology side of this and the actual science beso- behind what he's misrepresenting and i feel as though i have some insight into his communication strategy reg- like mm-hmm. what he's attempting to impart on people and what he's utilizing in the way of misinformation in order to construct narratives and yeah. and how he's drawing from so i like us as a team right now i think that maybe some people may glean something from this despite like some, we like we like to have a drink and have fun oh, yeah. but like there's some information in here that i think hopefully will be value to some people like that the sens are a better hockey well, yeah. team than the fucking Maples. not at fucking all well, yeah, how are that you? Drink. I have to finish yeah. reading this article. We've already been okay, talking yeah, for sorry, a long yeah, time. Right. Many mm-hmm. of you are still laughing at this article. <laughs> I don't know who would laugh at this article. This is a really serious and very important article. God, I really want to know what the comments section is doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. We'll we'll figure that out in a minute. We'll, re- but, we'll read it uh, later. We'll read it later. We'll read it later. Oh, this <laughs> That's probably because you don't even know what a fossil is. Oh, this is this is what got me canceled. <laughs> this is why I don't get to be an atheist anymore. So what's what exactly is a fossil? It's a bone that is turned into rock. There's wrong. A- Absolutely fucking wrong. A fossil is evidence of ancient life. Uh, a leaf. You can have fossil leaves. You can have fossil bones. Hey, Ben, what about fucking footprints, moron? Footprints are fossils. They're trace fossils. Yeah, I've, I live in Nova Scotia where Joggins is. I, so I've seen yeah. the polystrate trees, yeah. IRL. Yeah. They're yeah. not bones. Nope, not bones. And uh, by the way, not all fossils are fossilized. Um, <laughs> see, he doesn't know this. I don't know if some of your uh, fans I do. I don't know if I'm... I'm uh, I am the former lab supervisor of the La Brea Tar Pits, the Page Museum at the La Brea Tar Pits, the world's largest collection of Ice Age mammal fossils. <laughs> you buying that microphone is like the best thing. Right, right, right. <laughs> Com- compared to when I was on Paul's thing and I was like, <laughs> now it's just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Super. ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you a story about fossils in the tar pits. <laughs> The fossils aren't fossilized. They're actually impregnated with localized tar deposits, and they're later dug up. So when you're holding a fossil that has been recovered from the tar pits, or, for example, the 
this mammoth tooth I happen to have in my fucking hand right now that I pulled out of an ice cave in Siberia. This is not fossilized. This is the physical tooth of an animal that was 37,500 years ago. This is a fossil. It's not fossilized. Fossils are evidence of ancient life. That's it, Ben. Some of them, yes, have been petrified. They've been mineralized. All the organic material has been replaced with the sediment that was surrounding them, but not all of them. So that standard fucking final statement you said is wrong. All right. Well, let's carry on to, to, to what, uh, what, what got me canceled from atheism. Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's a mineralized fossil. This is fossil wood. That has been turned into... That is a fucking rock in the shape of the material that it once was. But it fossilizes so cleanly, you can actually see the bark, the growth rings. You can see all that. You can see the microcrystalline structure of the bone itself. That's why we lick fossils in the field. Because when a fossil fossilizes... It preserves the microcrystalline structure of the bone itself. That's why fossils stick to your tongue, That's just like they stick to a bone. Yeah, we actually do lick them. That's not a misnomer. That's absolute truth. And uh, that statement pisses me off, and it caught you kicked out of atheism. I did, I, no, this is what got me kicked out of atheism. This right here. This is what I screen capped because this is where I this is where I lost it. I thought this was insane. And I didn't think anybody would take this seriously if I tweeted it. So I, this is what I tweeted. There's actually no possible way to determine the difference between a regular rock and fossilized bone. If yeah, you, you lick it. <laughs> if you were to test a dinosaur bone, it would, be, it would be just the same as a rock. Fascinating how so many dinosaur bones are found in actual rock bed. How can anyone prove that these scientists didn't just carve out a bone in the shape form from the rocks that's got me he's obviously never done any sort of paleontological digging before right i was like how the fuck like you would see chisel marks like uh, how do you know the venus yeah. de milo isn't a fossil because you can see fucking chisel mark like there's clear yeah. i'm an idiot when it comes to this shit. And I could easily give 15 rebuttals to why that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Where are the chisel marks on this motherfucker? Right? I must have I must have carved this out of wood. Actually, this is also still not fossilized. Um, this is a, uh, uh, it's a uh, horse uh, um, metapodial, uh, also from Siberia. But like going back to that petrified wood that I've got, it's like, no, you can, you can, you can see the striations in the bark. You can see the growth rings. You can see all that in this chunk of fucking wood. And those aren't chisel marks. They're not worn. It's like that, that, that's one of the dumbest arguments. That's almost as bad as the, oh, you know, paleontologists just make fake casts of bones and make repl replicas. It's like, so you think that we're spending nine weeks in brutal fucking conditions chiseling shit out? No, no. By the way, a lot of dinosaur material is totally different colors from the fucking shit it's found from. The reason why is different organic materials fossilize at different rates and there's different, oh my, it's like, ugh. <laughs> yeah i know and, the oh, rest yeah, and, of this gets insane too like it gets yeah, crazy and and here's the thing not to play devil's advocate but if all of them were carved out of bone or, or carved out of rock why can we demineralize some of them and find the dinosaur soft tissue requirement uh, uh material oh. that a lot of creationists freak out about the mayor schweitzer so, findings but like, because you, yeah, as soon as you say yeah. soft tissue though People are going to be like, oh, he admitted that there's soft tissue. Well, yeah, there is soft tissue, of course. But what they because never they don't understand what soft tissue means. They think it means blood vessels, like actual right. like blood vessels. Like, in no, that like was one. That was one single example. Um, but they also don't read the paper and focus on the word demineralized. So, like, if I were to put 
this chunk of fossilized wood into a very, very low acid bath, it would slowly demineralize. It would slowly break down. There might be some actual wood material in the very middle of it that wasn't fully fossilized. Maybe, maybe not. Who the fuck knows? But that's how that was done. Entire fossils like segments had to be sliced and then they were demineralized. They were soaked in a weak acid for days, weeks, or months in order to get like a nanometer, a fucking human hair sized chunk of spongy red goo. This, this is not some like it's I like, like I said on another podcast, it's not the crack open goo comes out. That's what they think it is. Yeah. But it's interesting that he goes this route because that's flying in the face of his fellow creationists. Oh, interesting. So he's taking he's taking this to the nth degree. He's oh, like, he nope, they're is. dragons. So I mean, this is that's the AIG. Is a, that's the AIG like talking point oh, yeah. though, too. That's the Ken Ham talking point. Is that it, it's, it's it's they are dragons, a lot of them. like yeah. tons of them, because that's how they explain it away. They say, you know, yeah. you've heard about dragons, right? That's in recent history, like you know, King Arthur's court. You've heard about right. dragons. Obviously, they got that idea somewhere. That means dinosaurs existed, and we've just mislabeled them as dragons because it, that word, the word dinosaur, didn't even exist till 1842. So right. obviously, we were mislabeling them, and they. But that, that as their argument, yeah, their argument is that they that the dragons were mislabeled. That there were no mm -hmm. such thing as dragons. They were dinosaurs. This guy is going completely counter to that. Yeah. And it's just like, man, pick your creationist avenue there, bud. I mean, I mean, wow. Ugh. And I and and the guy's a chicken shit anyway, because he uh, he has uh, comments closed on that article because that was the is. first thing I went. It was like this thread is closed. I'm like, oh, of course it is. And there's zero comments on it, man. You're going to get blocked so fast if you aren't already. There's no. Oh, he doesn't know who I am. Not yet. On. T he not yet. Oh, that's I'll get in the comment that. section on how fast Trevor gets blocked on Twitter. <laughs> there, yeah. So that, that that'll be that'll be the bet. Yeah. Um, Once this stream ends, whenever that yeah. is, how many minutes <laughs> after after this stream ends? All right. Before, yeah. So here here's the thing. Ben if if you're if you're Trevor. watching this. When you're watching this, the moment this ends and it gets posted to YouTube, <laughs> I will tweet Ben directly about this video and call him a whole bunch of names on Twitter. <laughs> In the number of minutes, we will count the number of minutes it takes me to. I will post on my Twitter at Tattoos and Bones. I will do a public post on it so everybody can see the date code. The person closest in the number of minutes will get a signed Mammoth's Unearthed DVD from me. <laughs> and their comment will be pinned at the top of this video. Um, I will definitely I'm totally, do that. I'm totally taking control of Shannon's, uh, like, <laughs> I'll the, absolutely the, the back do of that. this. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> at the end of this video, I will tweet Ben and uh, do the whole thing, call him an idiot, and say that I completely ripped apart his stupid dinosaur article. And we'll see how fast it takes to block the one closest by minute. So you don't don't say two hours. Like after you post no, your so, tweet. Like yeah, from after I post my tweet. Okay. Yeah. From that point, counting whoever is closest in number of minutes. Oh, so like, God. don't say like two hours. It's 120 minutes. There's so many so variables. The, yeah. So like many. what? I mean, what I, time zone is Ben in? Like when will he see it? Like is uh, it he's uh, well, according to this Matt, according, all the shit matters. He's uh, Michigan, isn't he? Oh, so he, it's currently 1030 for him right now. Yeah, I think, I think he's, I think he's still in Michigan. Let me double check here. Uh, Metro Detroit area, uh, central Wisconsin. Yeah. So he's, he's. All right. So yeah, it's he, late. So he may not see it till the morning. These oh, are yeah, all yeah, these people yeah, to yeah, take into consideration. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. He's, it's the Wausau area that he's in. So yeah. So take that into consideration. But the person closest to the number of minutes that it takes him to block me <laughs> will get a signed uh, Mammoth Sun Earth DVD from me. I hope he doesn't. I hope that, like, I hope he engages, but there's not a chance he will. He's going to block you. <laughs> a, oh, I, of course. There's a 98% chance that you're getting blocked. 
And oh, because I'm going to pull out. I'm, I'm not going to pull any punches. I'm no. going to. Hey, Ben, Weird. you're the guy that wrote that completely <laughs> stupid fucking article about dinosaurs, right? Well, hey, I took two, three, four hours, however the fuck long it's been, hour and a half, uh, to rip it apart, and we're still going. And uh, yeah, here's the link, by the way. Enjoy, jackass. <laughs> Okay. All right. We have, there's still like one, two, like five more paragraphs. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. Don't you find it fascinating that when these scientists go out looking for dinosaur bones, they usually find them? One, totally not true. And two, uh, well, we look where we found them before. I Duh. Know. It, but that baffled me. Like in my mind, I, fe I feel like he thinks that paleontologists are just like, you guys want to look in that field? And everybody's like, yeah, we do. And you just like walk out into a field and dig and you're like, we found one. <laughs> like there's See, no research or science or previous right, right. finds going we, into deciding where to dig. You guys are just like, we're going to dig a hole over. <laughs> yeah. You just go. What are you doing? Just wing it. Just fuck it. Yeah, we're like just going to wing it. Whatever. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to drive my ass off into the Hell Creek formation in the middle of Montana. And yeah, just find things. I mean, yeah, yeah. sure. It's it's near a place called Dinosaur National Monument for a reason. But um, yeah, uh, what, what a Muppet. <laughs> what an absolute Muppet. You just and find them. That's it's the weird. thing. So yeah, I formerly worked at the Page Museum, but what I do now is fossil mitigation. I'm contracted through environmental consulting firms to monitor construction sites in case fossils are recovered. Um, out of a hundred sites, I found fossils at like two. So no, we don't always find them. And it's not where we dig. It's not where we choose to dig or anything like that. We know where they are because we found them there before. And we do things like, huh, how old is that rock? So that rocks from the Cretaceous period. So there could be fossils in there. Let's look around. Nope, we didn't find anything. We spent six weeks, found nothing. Well, let's go to a totally different place next year and see if we can do that. Oh, shit. Look, we found a Tyrannosaur. Cool. Now let's start looking around because the conditions were right in this area to fossilize things. And then you find dinosaurs. It's super fucking easy because we know where to look because shit's been found there before. And we're highly educated people that do things like research. It's not Weird. fucking hard. Ugh, Is that like Googling shit. something that agrees with you? Is that the right? same? It's the same, yeah. right? It's the same yeah. thing. Instead of Googling dinosaurs, you Google dinosaurs didn't exist. Yeah. And then that's, you that's... find an article that tells you what you already think. And then you're like, that makes sense. And then you researched. Right. Okay. I was right. just making sure because to me, that's what I feel like it might probably be. All right. Fuck, I'm out of beer. Go get a beer. I'll go get a beer. You keep reading. I will keep reading. Can you should hear? I do whiskey? <laughs> All right. They have to or else they won't continue to get funding if they keep coming up. <laughs> if they keep Natural coming. Natural history museums are some of the most poorly funded museums there are. Art museums get fucking millions of dollars more. That's such bullshit. We have to fight for grants. Whatever. This oh, is yeah, pre-whiskey, Trevor. Well, this is my maple leaf whiskey, so. Oh. Dave Keon. Yep. Oh. At least it's Canadian. Two times Stanley, Stanley Cup champion. Just everybody, just listen to me, not Trevor. Okay, so they have to, <laughs> or else they won't continue to get funding. If they keep coming up empty-handed empty every time. So simultaneously, they usually find them and also come up empty-handed every time. Same paragraph. Every time. Yep. Every time. Yep. But you yeah. always find them, and that's suspicious, except for when you come up empty-handed every time. Every time. Every yeah. time. How come nobody accidentally comes across dinosaur bones? And th that happens all the fucking time. Like all I go time. to the Tyrell all the time. It's one of my favorite museums. And most of the most of the exhibits there were accidentally found through people looking for oil or people yep. on hikes or erosion in the prairies. Like n never is it like paleontologists just randomly chose to dig here and found a dinosaur. It's usually like some idiot or some business came across. Well, not an idiot, like a, some person, some random person came across yeah. this or a business came across this 
and had the wherewithal to be like, oh, wow, I should go tell somebody I found this and then sign That's the entire business in. I'm in. Right? That's the entire business I'm in. So, like, in the middle of downtown Los Angeles. You talk. I'm going to get a drink. Keep talking. I know okay. you can't. Oh, yeah. In, um, in the middle of downtown Los Angeles, uh, I was monitoring a site for an apartment building that was going to be built. It's, you know, multi-story apartment building. First floor was going to be res uh, was going to be retail. And then you have all these residential and all that. I found a fossil coral reef, which a chunk of it is right here. This is a whole bunch of fossilized razor clam burrows. Found that at this dig site. And uh, also part of a whale rib cage and around 400 shark teeth. Had no idea it was there. Had, you know, could conceivably think yeah maybe something was there because that area was under about 1200 feet of water about seven million years ago but you know educated guess but most of the time when i go onto a monitoring thing like for uh for example the solar farm outside of prim nevada out just outside of vegas i did that entire thing for seven months found absolutely nothing didn't find a single damn piece of scrap nada but plenty of fossil material has been found. One of the most famous was found accidentally by a kid. Fossil's name is Leonardo. It's a mummified hadrosaur. Oh. So it's one of the few examples of soft tissue preservation, meaning skin, organs, and all that happen to be in a really good place for fossilization. Kid found that. People find shit all the fucking time. Um, I was part, I was called in the middle of a work day because a farmer found a fucking mammoth in the middle of an artichoke field in Castroville, California. Oh, that must've been a fucked up day. <laughs> oh yeah. It just, you know, tilling your field and all of a sudden, <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh, holy shit. That's a really big bone. Yeah. Happens all the time, Ben. Obviously you didn't do any fucking research and you're talking out of your ass again, but Hey, yes. Yeah. what? That's what serves you, you fucking muppet. So many of these are immediately recognizable falsehoods. Like, Oh, yeah. Just from existing in reality and consuming general media and going to museums and reading the things that the museums say, I was able to glean right away that, like, that was false. Even if you want to grant that those bones are dinosaurs or are dragons or whatever the hell – like, right. sure, whatever. They were still found by just random people. I feel bad that I said idiots because they were probably lovely people. <gasps> but I'm all worked up. Yeah. And I've now had <clears throat> two drinks and plus some of this drink. But doesn't, like, it, he, he just keeps negating himself all over the place. And it's like he doesn't even recognize it. And I don't understand how anybody reading this would, like, in that paragraph, he said, isn't it crazy right. that they always find bones? And they have except to. Except when they don't. Except yeah. for they never do. Ever. Yeah. I was like, it was a two-sentence paragraph. And each sentence contradicted itself. Unbelievable. All right. Are we he's, ready? He's not the sharpest crayon in the box. Is he even in the box? No, no. Mm. He's that poor orphan crayon that's like still in the middle school fucking. Oh, yeah. It's just it's like kind of half melted, stuck under one of the desks. And every time somebody walks by it, they make sure not to step in it because it would get. It's, wow. That was talking from experience there. <laughs> All right. So did you know that skeletons in museums are almost always fake this is why you and Kasha got in that fight because she was touching a fake skeleton <laughs> yeah exactly yeah because yeah. she was touching all that plastic <laughs> yeah no i i no i didn't know if it was if it was a fucking oh yeah um long story short uh there was an incident at a natural history museum that happened to be with a dinosaur that i actually cleaned and kesha Yes, the pop star Kesha um, jumped up onto the mount and posted an Instagram post. And yeah, you can Google Trevor Valley paleontologist Kesha and the whole thing will come up. Um, but if that was just like a fake that I happened to be working on in public view the entire time in the Discovery Center, um, you can actually come up to me and go, what are you doing? Cleaning a Triceratops. <laughs> 
and people are like what the fuck yeah it was that it was weird um but then i did that at the tar pits too anyway um not that one but regardless um yeah if that was just a fake why the hell did i get so upset you got mad <laughs> i got super mad um and here's the thing and I know what he would say. Oh, because you're a paleontologist and you cleaned it. And da, 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 da. I was no longer associated with the museum at the time, jackass. Why would I risk my own career of being the angry guy on Twitter? Going after one of the most recognizable pop stars if that was fake. And I did this for three days while I was at my other job. So, No. And whenever we do use a cast, which, by the way, a cast, meaning it has been created from a mold from an actual fucking bone. When we use casts or replicas, they are illustrated in the label copy most of the time. If you go to the Field Museum and you look at the new exhibit about Sue, the really big, awesome T-Rex, it illuminates which ones are actual, which ones are replica, and the skull you'll see illuminates as a replica. But if you look to the left, Sue's head is in a fucking box. That's because dinosaur bones are incredibly fucking heavy. Yeah. When they're fossilized, when it's a fossilized bone, it's really fucking heavy. So when, and also usually they're in a fuck ton of pieces. When Sue died, their hips fell over in a death pose and crushed its own skull. So the skull is in thousands of fucking pieces and it's all smashed and fucked up. It's been mostly put back together as best they could, but you can't put that on display because the mount, the armature needed for it would be too difficult to use. So you put it in a box, you make a cast, pardon me, you make a cast of it and you put it up there. It's real easy. And it's not like we lie. It's not like, oh, yeah, see that dinosaur? No, it, it tells you this composite. Many dinosaur skeletons are composites. They are from other animals of the same species put into a single mount to give you an idea what an average specimen would look like. When they're a composite, for example, like the Triceratops that I was cleaning that Kesha jumped on. We show that it's a composite from multiple individual animals because it's incredibly rare to find one complete thing. Sue, uh, the stegosaur at the ROM, um, Black Beauty, different ones like that. Those are few and far between because all the fossils have to fossilize correctly. All the fossils have to be found in one area and all the fossils have to survive being eroded chiseled driven over all of this stuff it's not if if it was if it was a conspiracy like he says it is why the fuck would we not be finding more and more absolutely complete pristine things that we could just make up holy fuck here's an a hundred percent of a dinosaur we found no we're just gonna find 92 percent of one or 86 percent of one or like four vertebrae why are we bothering to do piecemeal shit like that instead of just coming up? Why are, why are we faking the, the birds are dinosaurs thing? Why wouldn't we just go, look, hey, look, we found the perfect transitional fossil. See, this is such an ugly and stupid Oh, that's such a good idiotic. point. Yeah. Because you just, just like, made why ha Yeah. We would have already fucking made it. You'd, made, you'd have made all the steps. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a good point. It's so, I'm not I've, bananas, I've, so I don't. I didn't think of. Yeah, that's good. That, I we would have already fucking done it. Yeah, and then presented. But we it. haven't. Yeah, ta-da! Here we go. And if we have this big fucking, you know, paleontology cabal, if this is our whole thing, if this is our super secret, you know, Illuminati bullshit, that all we're trying to do is, you know, cancel God and prove evolution, we would have faked it by now really well we wouldn't have actually found things like they tend to do um uh, what is it tilt down man and all that by the way science are the ones paleontologists are the ones that went no that's fake that's not right why would we do that if there's a grand conspiracy to kill god 
Yeah, like why would you point out the people that are fake, that have faked these things over time? Why would you say, hey guys, no, we don't want you in our science because we can see all of the reasons. conspiracies are bullshit, people. What? We'll get into that later. All right, so did you even know that skeletons in museums are almost always fake? That's the sentence we finished. (laughs) <laughs> they, they will even admit this fact. They will tell you it's a replica. They will tell you not to worry. The real bones are hidden away where no one can actually see them. No, they're in the case over there. Yeah, and I've seen Black Beauty, where in the mm-hmm. only thing that is fake about Black Beauty in its entire form is the head and like mm-hmm. the, the, the cranial portion. And because reason- that can't be articulated up that because right. it's too fucking heavy. Exactly. Yeah. And they actually have it separate in front of the skeleton. The actual, yep. they have it like there and they say, yeah. this is the actual head of Black Beauty. Yeah. We can't put it up there because it's too heavy and it's too high a risk. So mm-hmm. we like, it's all detailed out. Yeah. So like I've seen it. A couple of times. <laughs> I've, mm-hmm. I have pictures of myself standing in front of that head. All right. So they will keep them hidden away where nobody can see them. And also you can see them in most museums I've been to like, that have paleontological exhibits. There are open windows where you can mm-hmm. see the people actively working. Yep. So the visible lab idea started at the Page Museum at the La Brea Tar Pits. Which is fascinating. Uh, My son loved it. Yeah. He thought it was the coolest yeah. thing ever. It's 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 really neat. You can you actually see, we called it the fishbowl. Mm-hmm. It's 60 feet of nearly soundproof glass, and you look in at people cleaning bones. Yeah. They do that at the Field Museum. They do that at the Terrell. They do that at the ROM. Right next they to do Black that Beauty in, at the Terrell. Right next to, yeah, right next to Black Beauty. So, again... Um, they do that at NHM in Los Angeles up on the, up on the, uh, second floor. Again, if this was the grand conspiracy, why would we be doing that? Yeah. You know, to make up appearances, to make it seem like it, but we already would have found the complete specimens to shut all you fuckers up. (laughs) We would have found them because we would have made them if it's a big paleo concern. Conspiracy. Hashtag big paleo. You it's, would have chiseled them just, out of rocks because yeah, fossils are just yeah. rocks and you guys just made right. those bones anyway. Yeah. I mean, that, that's it. Yeah. I admit, yep, yeah, that's it. That's all we do. We chisel them out. Don't worry. It's like, it. it's not like, um, for example, Spinosaurus, that a new paper was just released because more material was found because the original Spinosaurus material was destroyed in World War II during a bombing. But more stuff has been found. It turns out that they're semi-aquatic because they have a really cool bitch and webby tail. That's rad. Well, if that was the case, why didn't we just do that when we made the first fake Spinosaurus ones? Why are paleontologists up in arms about how the velociraptors are portrayed in the Jurassic saga? Because they're not scientifically accurate. Why don't we just go, oh, no, that, that's totally fine. I mean, because come it doesn't the fuck comport on, with your narrative. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, we, it's the big narrative. Oh, God. Yeah, because you guys, guys are the ones idiot. constructing narratives with all of the pieces of evidence that you've discovered. Right, yeah, and, and, it, and, and it's taken us since 1842 to carve all this shit and not have one, well, I mean, there's plenty of And also, you fall. always find things, and that's suspicious, and you never find things, and that's suspicious, and you make things up, and that's suspicious. Right, right. And yeah, it... it yeah, and paleontology is this totally like we're all on the right page and we all talk to each other and we don't do things against each other to harm each other. Like Cope and Marsh, the two guys in the Bone Wars, best of friends. Yeah, they didn't do things like dynamite each other's quarries or try and and get people arrested and all of this stuff. No, I mean, we would never do that because we have to actually, you know, promote the, the hysterical idea that this is all fake god damn it i hate this fucking conspiracy theory. trevor this you're fine so, trevor just this simmer is, down this is, simmer down you're this fine is right up, this is right up there with flat earth and fucking chemtrails yes you're correct but Ugh. you just need to just we're not we're almost done mm. we're almost we're done almost and done. then we have to take almost questions done. and we've already been at this for almost two hours okay i'm gonna blast through some of this they will all right. tell you it's a replica blah, i'll blah, shut blah, up blah. it's not because they're too rare <laughs> 
<laughs> they could just put them behind glass casing, which they do all the time. It's because that he's going to tell you why you do this, okay? So are you ready? Are you ready for why mm-hmm. you fake all of the dinosaur bones? If they use real fossilized bones, and also fossils don't exist, by the way, because they can't. Right. Um, they will hardly have any skeleton to show you. They make up most of the dinosaurs through artistic design. But don't worry, folks. Even though you cannot see, feel, touch, or examine any of these bones, just trust them. Isn't that what you've been taught to do? <laughs> Are you licking it? Did you just lick I'm seeing and Trevor's feeling it and touching wood. it and licking it. <laughs> Trevor's licking wood on my live stream. <laughs> Demonetize. <laughs> oh, like you were ever monetized. Oh, not ever. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes I am. Not today. Not recently. So that's that's. Do you have anything to say about that? I'll continue. There's not many left. Well, no, we actually we actually killed that whole thing before oh, with the got, fact okay. that yeah, Here's... it's like no, you you can actually go to a museum and see all the fossils. Ta-da. Yeah, and some of them are behind glass, so you're yeah. full of shit. Yeah. And I I actually I I accidentally may have touched Black Beauty because I was just accidentally touched it because I wanted to touch fossil accidentally. Here's what's really interesting. I could make the case, don't hurt me, Trevor, that any dinosaur fossil that they find are simply dragon bones. He could make that case. I don't know how he's made that case, though. But all right, he could, I guess, but he hasn't. There are many historical accounts describing different types of dragons. Some have the long necks with the fat body. Some are snake-like. Some have wings. Some do not. So there's variation in dragons and there's variation in dinosaurs. Thus, they're the same thing. And you renamed dragons dinosaurs so that you could pretend the world was over, was older than it is. And mm-hmm. the end. No, it's it's the next paragraph that actually seals his, you can entirely see where his argument is coming from. European culture documents dragons as fact. White European culture. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Ancient Chinese culture documents dragons as fact. The Mm -hmm. Bible documents dragons as fact. There we go. Yeah. That's the crux of it, right? It's... yeah. It, it all comes down to, uh, oh, what's the name of it in the Bible? Somebody's going to remember it for me, and I can't right now. Leviathan, Leviathan. Behemoth. Yeah. Leviathan. That's what I was thinking of. Leviathan. The whale. Yeah. Yeah, the whale. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Behemoth, and mm-hmm. there's one other that I can't think of off the top of my head in the Old Testament that they reference as being analogous to this, and then mm-hmm. they just... Po- like point to myth myth and this is what's crazy too because any other mythological shit they'll see as heretical nonsense right but they're more than willing to incorporate this because it has yeah. a utility yep. any yeah, other like mythology sim- heretical nonsense bullshit don't you dare even read it don't you trust it don't you look into mm-hmm. it but this stuff believe a little bit just an, just enough for us to incorporate it into the narrative that we're attempting to sell you. Yeah, the the seven headed dragon was of course a seven headed dragon. It had nothing to do with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, in Revelations. It had of course it had nothing to do with like the the imagery that it was actually about Rome. Uh, but we we won't talk about that because no dragons have to be real. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, Trevor. Yeah, I mean, Game of Thrones the- was so popular because dragons are real. Yeah. Because everybody gets to see them all the time and already read about them in their history books and they're just matter of fact. I wonder if he has a problem with Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, fucking probably. Probably. I mean, what what side of the, um, oh, what were those things? Because it's fantasy. Um, uh, God damn it. Um, What were the, uh, Chick Tracks. You know, the Dangerous Dungeons Chick Track. Um, Uh. It's like, I wonder what side of that argument he falls on. Well, if dragons are real then why would Dungeons and Dragons be bad? That's the messed up thing with a lot of these evangelical positions is that Mm -hmm. they'll allow you to borrow information that you're familiar with through culture, 
through cultural exposure in order to inform your opinion on something as they want you to relate it to biblical revelation. Yeah. That, but they will not allow you to be fully exposed to it because if you're fully exposed to it, you'll maybe start to delve into it enough that you recognize the fact that they're, they don't have anything to do with one another and somebody's constructing a narrative to sell you a bill of goods in order to keep you beholden to the narrative that they're attempting to sell you. And then you start might start asking why. And right. then they might start vilifying you. And then you might... It, like, it, it drives me insane. <laughs> it's this next paragraph that drives me insane. This, this is, is the, the one last where one. I... This is the, the this sec- is where we're hitting second home. Second to last. Second to last. <laughs> oh, yeah, because um, the last one is just a fucking sentence, but whatever. Yeah, but this paragraph, this is the one that I started laughing really hard reading. This is where you and started got, laughing? Th- this one is where I started laughing because I was slowly picking it apart. But it's this one that I really just lost my shit and started laughing really hard and then got really, really angry. I'd read four paragraphs when I sent this to you and I'd already almost peed. <laughs> like I literally had to walk away from it and just talk to Paul for a minute and be like, I can't digest can, this all at once. I can't. It's going to take me a long I, time. Can I read yes, this Yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. I'll scroll down. You read it. Read it, read it, please, Trevor. <clears throat> so it was like, uh, the, it, you know, it's like the Bible documents, dragons is fact. So this this is the paragraph that, uh, Ben, Ben, your, your writing is so, is so wonderful. <laughs> So what happened to the dragons? They simply went extinct like many other species have. We even know the reason why they went extinct. Historical records show that dragons like to live in caves. They also show that dragons like to eat sheep. Dragons were a threat to many farmers and their livestock. You've heard of the term dragon hunter, haven't you? That's because there were actual dragon hunters in history. Farmers in a town would have a dragon problem where a dragon was attacking their livestock they would pay someone to slay the dragon. This depleted the numbers of dragons, and they eventually went extinct. Wolves almost went extinct in America for the same reason. Ben Armstrong has now just documented that the movies Dragon Slayer and, and oh shit! I just forgot the the Sean Connery one where he plays the dragon oh, with uh, with with yes. Dennis Quaid. I know exactly what you're um, talking about. Yeah. Oh, oh God! Shit. What is it? It doesn't matter because they're all pretend. It doesn't matter. But, <laughs> but That's those. Why. So we. This is why I lost my shit. Because right before I read this article, I I watched the documentary about Galaxy Quest. You know, never give up, never surrender, where the aliens. <laughs> thought that Galaxy Quest was historical documents. So so he thinks that Dragon Slayer and Dragonheart, there it is, Dragonheart, yes, that's are, are, are historical documents. I really want to see what the guys, the history buffs fucking YouTube channel. We'll go with that. <laughs> I'm hold. I'm barely holding it together. There's like, there's no way to refute that though, Trevor, because that historically, you've heard about dragon slayers, Trevor. You've heard about them. You heard about them, Trevor. How do you explain how you've heard about dragon slayers <laughs> if there weren't any fucking dragons, Trevor? Jesus, oh I don't understand what your problem is. You know what? Like Dragon I'm... Slayer and Dragonheart and the horrible <laughs> and a horrible directed video sequel of Dragonheart. Yeah. Are historical documents now. And um, if we hadn't they're... killed them all, there'd probably be no sheep. <laughs> so you should actually be happy because lambs are adorable. Yeah. And I don't know why you hate sheep. I don't because because mutton mutton and lamb are deli- it's delicious. Trevor, I mean, I'm I don't, really I don't upset fall... with you right now because I feel I like you don't understand dragons. history as well as anybody who has heard of dragon slayers <laughs> and i think i think dragon slayers is, is airing on netflix right now <laughs> and i told my audience there was going to be a scientist here and i'm real i'm sorry i i, yeah. I apologize yeah. to my audience um 
That's the article. So all those D and all those D and D campaigns, <laughs> all those D and D campaigns where you have to go hunt the dragon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be <laughs> the Hobbit. The Hobbit, totally, a hundred percent with smog, smog. Oh yeah. That historical document. Game of Thrones, obviously historical. Yeah. Um. Holy fuck! The Dragonlance Saga by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Yeah, that's based on fact. Um. Holy shit. It, that that was the paragraph that oh, I fucking lost. It. Right? Like, that was him tying it all together. That's when he was like, I'm going to put a bow on this. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna, you yeah, it's the like dragon slayers yeah. and obviously farmers farm sheep. And I wonder if he, like, chose sheep purposefully because of the analogy when it comes to um, Jesus and God and sheep and the interest. That's just an interesting point of psychology. No, he's he's me. literally going at, he's going after white ethno European legends, mm. and they were predominantly sheep farmers, and the whole you know dragon coming out, and the valiant knight oh, the is like the is like, dude, Conan was not not historical. The Conan stories by Robert Howard, and also like farmers dragons. are just gonna kill just, dragons, like. Well, no, they have to hire the dragon hunter. <laughs> Yeah, farmers in a town would have a dragon problem. When a dragon was attacking their livestock, they would pay someone to slay the dragon. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. So there was yeah. like specialists. So went... <laughs> when, 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 uh, when Dennis Quaid and what? Sean Connery as the dragon are setting up that scam that the dragon shows up to the village and goes, oh, I'm going to eat your shit. And they fake the whole stabbing with the ballista and all that. This is actually from from uh, an early 13th oh century uh, man. No, I can't. I can't lie. I can't. Yeah. You know what? You need to but stop. You need to what stop. What the fuck, man? It was that paragraph. That and the, there is historical records. The dragons were real. Right. But only no, theories about dinosaurs. No, there's fucking not. There are no historical records. Of okay. Okay. We have to read Super Chats. We've been at this for two hours. Woohoo! <laughs> I knew this was going to take longer than I... But I'm glad. Hey. Hopefully people were educated and entertained. That Nobody was educated by me, probably. You're all in fucking quarantine. What else are you going to be doing other than watching <laughs> a YouTube video right now? I mean, come on. This I is know. the perfect time you for You made this. the right choice. You made the right choice is what you I'm saying. You did indeed. This was, this, was the, this was the clear choice. And don't forget to place your bets on how long it takes Ben to block Trevor because I like Remember, the moment we're done <laughs> and this and this goes and this gets posted on YouTube uh, as a permanent link. It will I be will within tweet seconds. Ben Armstrong. I will tweet Ben Armstrong. I will rip him apart. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna do it within like one tweet. <laughs> I'm just gonna call him an idiot. And then I ripped his entire article apart uh over two hours with Shannon. Oh, here. Article is generous. And Okay, that's a blog post. Horrifically, just shit strewn blog blog <laughs> post. And um, I'm gonna call him a dipshit. And remember, the person who gets the closest time in minutes. So if you have to calculate like what three weeks in minutes are, go ahead and do it. Um. Okay. If if it's over, if it's over one week, it'll be it'll be weeks, days, minutes, that whatever. Whoever has, whoever's closest to the time it takes him to block me wins a signed DVD of my National Geographic special, Mammoths on Earth. And, 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 I'll pin, and, I, and I will pin, pin. your comment because that's what, valuable what it, comparatively. What is it with the, the, the how ridiculous guys? We'll pin ya! you! Know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Those guys are wild. Anyway, We're going to go yeah. through Super Chats now. Let's, cause let's get these questions. People what the fuck apparently is a super found chat? this valuable enough to donate money to my channel. Which oh, is, is that what a super chat is? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You don't know what a super chat is? You can't be serious. No. I I watch you the, the the shows I watch on YouTube are like <clears throat> Alex Steele, Paul Agia, occasionally you, but I don't know what a super chat is. Did you call it Paul Agia? Yeah. <laughs> Pelosia. Whatever. Apologia. Apologia. Uh, oh, put that my on the soundboard. I love it when people mispronounce my, it. My, em my emphasis is on a different syllable. <laughs> Bite me. <laughs> you know, and like Demolition Ranch and stuff like that. I don't I don't ever read the comment section. And once the actual talk is done, I'm like, cool, that's it. And then I'm out. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the fuck a super chat is. Oh, it's when people it's it's really cool. Like 
I'm looking on this side now because I have two screens and I moved this over so I could read Super Chats. But I'm okay. going to say this. So it's real. It's really cool because it's people who are watching in real time who want to either ask a question or contribute to the channel can oh, donate cool. money. So that, and, and it comes up like I can't always see the chat in real time. Uh, mm -hmm. It's usually on the side, but I'm generally engaged in the conversation. So I can't see everything that like cycles through. In the so live they're basically chat. tipping you for the content. Yeah, yeah, or, oh, that's or rad. paying More of you should be doing that. More <laughs> of you should be doing that. No, it's okay. Support channels like these. <laughs> it's okay. Like I just want people to watch. I don't like that that's just it's delightful. It help it helps How me much do you have to do for a super chat? I think two dollars is the minimum or a dollar and a half. Oh come on, two bucks? A no. buck? Two bucks? <laughs> Any all of you can fucking do that. Come on. No, it's okay though. What the it's, hell? Because not everybody can, especially right now. Like not everybody can. Go but... buy Starbucks for a day. <laughs> Trevor, it's it's okay. Like because support smaller fucking businesses, smaller content creators, smaller things like that. Because that is how we get quality content showing up in this fucking world. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I will, I would do, my look on this is that I would do this 100% for free. Every okay. dollar that somebody, like this, I, I have a real job. There are people right now who don't. Who well, are in like I, I don't mean I, like in a quarantine situation. Right. Yeah, by at this point, like you know, hold on to what money you need to in order to eat. And you know, if you can't, if you don't pay, if you don't have to pay rent, don't. Um, fuck yes. that rent freezes. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, but holy shit. Um, yeah. I uh, agree with you that like no. content creators should be like supported because it's very difficult, especially like people like these dinosaur people and flat earthers they're thrown up in front of a lot of people like and they yeah. they make a lot of money just even on ad revenue and super chats and like a lot of like really counter like apologetic like christian channels that purport these sorts of yeah. conspiracy theory nonsense anti-science yeah, like rhetoric. eric dipshit dubay and all that yeah. right so a lot of yeah. a lot of those people have a lot of subscribers and a lot of people who are financially supporting them so you need to be motivated by a different standard in order right. to do this type of thing you are and that's one of the reasons that i respect you so much because you don't do this because you're hoping that somebody's going to throw some money at you i i don't Fuck do it no. for the for this if i did i'd have a patreon <laughs> <laughs> and i do have a patreon that's the thing wow. i do but for the for the un, until there is no coronavirus i won't charge my patrons cool idea I will. Well, then let's I get won't. to these people that are like willing during a fucking pandemic to right. give you money. What what are they saying? But you also don't want like I am gonna read the super chats. I promise. Okay. But like th this is a good conversation to have, and it's not always had. Um, one of the one of the reasons that I don't attempt to elicit it is because I don't ever want anybody to feel like that's my motivation. Got like it. it helps. Right? Like it yeah. does. Of course it does. Like monetary yeah. donations help. You're not going to say they don't help because of course right. they do. Like every people think YouTubers are in this situation where they're like, Ooh, I have a YouTube channel. So like, I'm like, Woo, money. No, <laughs> that's not yeah, the that, case. Well, like that, your motivations that, that's are South Park. I want the internet right. money. Yeah. yeah. So. You essentially you're motivated by, by something different or, or you're not like some people put out nonsense and just get money thrown at them. <sighs> But I Sergeant, always anyone? want Ooh. people to understand what my motivations are. I want people Got to it. know that I do this because I think it's valuable and I want them to have something that entertains and educates and I want to be an advocate. And if they don't ever give me a dime, I'll still be present because cool. that's what motivates me. And if they do give me a dime, that helps. I hate to say that it helps motivate, but it makes me feel a little bit like, oh, okay, cool. Like people, people yeah. get it. People, you know, understand that essentially I'm doing this as like a, a second job. Because people like being, <laughs> yeah, people like being acknowledged. People like yeah, doing that, of course. Yeah, yeah, but also like you know, an encouraging word helps too. Because you get, anyway, I'm gonna yeah. start reading the super chats that people paid Do for it. instead of just talking about why I feel bad that people pay for them. Um, so first one's from Viber Viberly Brantley. Uh, trash, garbage, rubbish, winky face. 
And the next one, <laughs> but there's a lot from Brandt. <laughs> Homage! Slime! It's like, what? what is that? <laughs> it's a Princess Bride. <laughs> oh, I love Princess Bride. Oh, yeah. Foul witch rubbish! Slime! <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, so... You had true, bl- you true love! Sorry. I've been drinking. Cheers. Queem98 <laughs> says, I knew about dinosaurs when I was five. Melissa! Awesome. Hi, Melissa. Melissa's one of my moderators. My face is going to hurt. Face palm. Brant again. Vibrantly Brantly. Vancouver Island wolves only eat the heads of salmon to avoid parasites like tapeworms. Not only men. Just take the head of an animal. Yep. yep. Trevor's entertaining. Um, uh, also, there's, uh, there's plenty of insect species that eat only the head. True. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Praying mantis. That's where all the, that's where all the good shit is. All the gooey good shit. All the brains. All the brains. Mm-hmm. Like zombies. All right. That's a good thing about the Vancouver Island wolves. Yeah. <laughs> Bath Mills. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Bath. I appreciate you. Hopefully you're still here. We've been at this for over two hours. So some people may have lagged off. But actually, there's all there's there's over like there's almost 200 people still watching. All right. So apologies. <laughs> Right on. Anytime anybody watches my channel, I'm like, why did you do that? That's weird. All right. Pologia. Pologia. All right. AIG. Pologia. 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 Pologia says AIG's Bodie Hodge says that St. George killed a dragon in 303 AD. Prove him wrong. Should I just like, should you just go talk to him? Because Bodhi just did a whole, Bodhi just did a whole episode on AIG about dragons and the, how oh, they're dinosaurs. God. Trevor, maybe you shouldn't answer it here. Maybe you should just do another one with Paul. Oh, God. <laughs> go subscribe Fucking to Bodhi. Yes. Oh, oh, I am subscribed to him. I just hadn't seen that one yet. I know you are. Oh. You were on his channel. Yeah, I know. No, he didn't do anything about it yet. It just, just happened like two days ago. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Paul, we need to do this, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Reappearance. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Uh, Learning with Suge. Hi, Suge. Thank you. Suge sent me an amazing lamp that I love very much. It's very sweet from my Amazon wish list. It was very generous of, of him, and I've been looking for him to say thank you. Great stream, Shannon. Very nice to hear from Trevor. Have a lovely night and take care. Yay. And zero, one, three, two. One, three, two. Dragons are real. Dinos are fake. Earth, Earth, E-R-F, is flat and young. The Bible tells me so. He doesn't <clears> believe <throat> that. that. Obvious, <laughs> obvious, obvious sarcasm. Yeah. He's, a t- he's attempting to get canceled like I did earlier. Oh, I scrolled down like way too much. Okay. So, Buck Melanoma. That's an interesting name. I saw a mold of Archaeopteryx. At End Science Museum in Minneapolis, had no yes. idea it was that small. I always yes. assumed it was the size of a petrodactyl or a pterodactyl. Oh. No, Archaeopteryx uh, lithographia are quite small. And the reason why you saw, saw a mold is there's only about 12 of them. If you want to see the original, you got to head over to London, go to the NHM there, and uh, or at least one of the originals. And yeah, they're they're actually they're small. They're they're like parrot sized. They're tiny little critters, slightly smaller than parrots. Oh, they're like parrot um, sized. Yeah, they're just they're little. They're they're just. I mean, the whole slab is about yay. It's not it's not very big at all. Oh. Um, and and that's the thing. A lot of uh, you don't until you see the actual specimen, you're not quite sure how big they are. And like in Jurassic Park with the whole velociraptors, velociraptors, everybody thinks are like five and a half, six feet tall. They're not. They're they're six feet long. They're one social distance measurement apart. <laughs> or, or one social distance That's a measurement unit long. of measurement now. <laughs> it is now. Please stay one velociraptor apart. But there, if it was standing on my table right here, it would only be about yay tall. They're only about a foot and a half, two, maybe three at the maximum. Jurassic Park were using Deinonychus. They were using much bigger ones because Michael Crichton liked the name Velociraptor more. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So, yeah, a lot of the stuff, unfortunately, in pop culture and just not seeing the specimens, you think they're a lot bigger than they are. But no, the, the child stars... Uh, could have kicked velociraptors out of the way. The the one person that was correct in Jurassic Park 
Was the kid at the beginning when he goes to Dr. Alan Grant was just, she's just an angry turkey? Actually, yes. <laughs> Velociraptors were about we're the size of an angry, angry turkey, turkey, just with a long tail. Ta-da. But yeah, that yeah, wow. that's good. Archaeopteryx is bitchin'. Such a such an amazing transitional form. Wow, cool. Wow. Thank you for that question. Because that was awesome. All right. So yes. vibrantly brantly again. How many paintbrushes does Trevor <laughs> How many paint brushes does Trevor go through on a dig site? Has Hollywood exaggerated the amount of brushes that are used? <laughs> Absolutely not. But the thing that actually goes through faster are dental picks. Oh. Yeah, because we use dental picks uh, to, uh, for very, very fine movements. I have a paint bucket right over there full of my field gear and then another two buckets still in my truck. And yeah, paintbrushes, old paintbrushes, small, large, thick, thin, zero gauge, all the way up to those big four inch wall painters we use to clear off overburden, all the matrix, the material that surrounds the bones. But a lot of us um, go through hundreds of dental picks. I can't tell you how many dental picks I've broken. I mean, we do have other material that we, uh, other items we use, like air scribes, which are like these tiny little mini jackhammers. They, uh, they were metal etching uh, from, they were metal etching pens from Chicago. They're connected to an airline and you knock off millimeter by millimeter of material. Um, and we also have air abraders, which use a combination of uh, different, uh, uh, different mass uh, sediments or or material they're like miniature sandblasters you dial them in that it's the material you're shooting out is harder than the material surrounding the bone but softer than the bone itself so you don't uh you don't damage the bone at all we use a bunch of different tools uh but definitely paintbrushes and dental picks yeah man i i can't tell you how many not not hours how many months i have been laying down in the middle of the fucking sun or rain or fuck knows what kind of environment with a brush brushing shit off. That's, that's a hundred percent real. Very cool. All right. Melissa again. Hi, Melissa. I support your brain, Shannon. Clearly I'm the smartest one on the stream. Melissa recognizes that. (laughs) smarter than I am. That's not the case. I'm just a dirt kicker. Yeah, you just use toothbrushes to like make rocks look like bones or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What do geologists do? Is that what you do? Is that... no. <laughs> Ge- <laughs> geologists are different. Geologists look at rocks. What? Ge- ge- yeah. Bones so are rocks. Not, it's the same thing. Not all paleontologists are geologists. A lot of them are. What? I actually got my start through biology. That so I sense because bones are rocks because fossils yeah. are just bones and they're rocks and they're the same thing. So you're a geologist. What? Fight me! <laughs> You'd lose. You don't know. Look at you. You can't even skate. I could skate. You see me? All right. Arden. Hi, Arden. I love Arden. Hi, Arden. I haven't seen Arden in ages. Are there any exciting new findings or new tech on the horizon for paleontology? Also, dinosaurs and Shannon Q only marginally make up for losing my hug at Faithless Forum. I know. Faithless Forum being canceled really, really sucks. It, I'm, I'm very sorry. Not canceled. Sorry. Postponed. I'll be there next year. There's already a date. I've already moved my plane tickets. Well, I haven't actually, but I will be moving my plane tickets. Yeah. So you'll get your hug next year, Arden. <laughs> so the, the, the newest thing that came out was, I mentioned it earlier, the Spinosaurus stuff. Um, a group of researchers discovered more Spinosaurus material, including a very, very uh, uh, detailed tail. And using uh, current 3D modeling and biomechanical movement and all that found out that the tail could actually be used very, very effectively in water. So we, we knew that, that Spinosaurus were, uh, Spinosauri were semi-aquatic and they, you know, they hunted fish and all that just because of the way they were shaped, the way their teeth are, uh, where they're found. But their movements, we weren't really 100% on. Now with this tail, we're like, damn, when these things got into the water, yeah, they're, they're cruising around like crocs. It, it was mind-blowing. That and the new, uh, the new nano-tyrant, nano-tyrannus in quotes, uh, paper 
which shows that Nanotyrannus, which was thought to be a smaller cousin of the T-Rex, is actually just a juvenile T-Rex. Those are the two current, uh, current big things out there. As for new technology, not really. We're, we're old school. Like the newest technology that we would use is like the newest 4x4 truck, that kind of stuff. Um, ground penetrating radar, like in uh, Jurassic Park, that doesn't work because if the bones are mineralized, they're the same density as the material around them. Um, it kind of works in permafrost situations. I use ground penetrating radar looking for bones in Siberia. And that was kind of cool, but it kind of worked, kind of didn't. We're not really a high tech, a high tech group. We're more boots on the ground, get out there with hand tools. If we're using something high tech, that's maybe like a backhoe to clear off some overburden that it just in order to really get through some uh, upper level shit before we get to it. But there is high tech being used elsewhere uh, in the research of dinosaurs, like X-ray spectroscopy, um, different kind of chemical signatures that are being found in uh, in uh, soft tissue that's being found, what's classified as soft tissue findings. Uh, anything that's not hardened fossilized bone is soft tissue and stuff like that. And yeah, you even have people still trying, I don't know why, still trying to do the whole clone a woolly mammoth thing. That'll never work because the way cells freeze, all the cells burst, and then you can't find the actual cell material in order to clone other than like having to use elephant eggs and a whole bunch of shit. So yeah, high tech and, and dinosaurs in the field, not so much when we're doing research, we use everything from, you know, uh, electron scanning microscopes and uh, a whole bunch of different stuff in order to figure out what they looked like, how they moved, how they acted and all that. But yeah, nothing really, nothing really high tech on the horizon right now. So the next one is Neil, the 604 Atheist. Hi, Neil. They're really cool. So is your background, Shannon. Hey, nobody's perfect. You get a 15-minute response to that? Just kidding. Well, Obviously, actually, don't. actually, yes. <laughs> nope. Next, David Jones. Thank you for the dollar. I appreciate you, David Jones. Ricardo. Hi, Ricardo. Thanks, Shannon. I had a blast. Trevor is great. I mean, I guess Thank you. that's fine. All right. So, huh? <laughs> I'm the worst. I don't know why you came here. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's weird. You asked me. <laughs> you asked me. Ha. Huh? Huh? No. You no. did. You, you did. You, you asked put, me. I said, who should I talk out. to? I you did. put a call out. Uh -huh. And I'm like. How about it? So you technically asked first. Oh my God, you're ridiculous. I said, <laughs> who should I talk to? And you said, me. Why not me? I and said, why I not said of course, I'd love to talk to you. Mm -hmm. All right, that's fine. We'll just deal with your ego later. That's all right. Fine, whatever. <laughs> I can't do super chat. Stop shaming me, Trevor, from zero. One, two, three. <laughs> Five really Brantley said, Trevor put fear into me. I can't afford it. But here, now they're just trying to make me feel bad. Uh, Apparently my, my audience is on your side. They're trying to, trying to make me feel bad. Hey, if Trevor. you haven't yet, follow me at Tattoos and Bones on Twitter and Instagram. I don't ask for money, but I tell you to pay money to other content creators. <laughs> Pay Trevor stuff. Give Trevor. I don't know how to give Trevor money, but just do it. Got, just throw money in the air and yell, Trevor, yeah, and he'll just go. come flying through the field. You need to it's start like the Kool-Aid man's like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that toonie fucker. <laughs> Nobody knows what a toonie is except for you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all the people who, and Paul, and, 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 Paul. Poly, and Polygia. All right. So. Polygia. <laughs> <laughs> Apologia. All right. Fine. David Jones said, Hey, Trevor, tell her how you met Skippy at Decon. <laughs> Is that something that needs to wait till later? No, no. So, okay. David, Skippy uh, at Dragon Con. Hey, how's it going, bud? Um, he's one of my oldest Dragon Con friends. Uh, <laughs> he was walking around in one of the coolest cosplays ever. He was dressed as a Jurassic Park technician with a baby Velociraptor puppet 
or a baby oh, T-Rex puppet. It was a cool. baby dinosaur puppet, but it was like all <laughs> swaddled and it was going like that. And I walked up, I'm like, holy shit, because he was wearing a sign that said, it's been this many days since a Velociraptor accident. <laughs> and immediately, immediately, I'm like, that is such a fucking rad cosplay. And we ended up hanging out the entire con running into other Jurassic Park cosplayers. And he's like, do you know this guy's an actual paleontologist? And they're like, oh, fuck, right. And we like, we played Mech Warrior in the old pods until like five in the morning. It was badass, but that was an amazing cosplay. Anytime I see Jurassic Park cosplay, even though it's not one of my favorite movies, and even though I have a big problem with it, I always walk up and he was like the first one. And I'm just like, dude, that's a bitchin' cosplay. We should hang out. And yeah, and we just have since. And yeah, Dave, Dave's a fucking character. He's awesome. Well, Absolutely awesome. Dave sounds like somebody worth meeting. He is totally worth meeting. You should totally come to Dragon Con. I don't know what Dragon Con is, but I feel like I would have fun there. Dragon Con is basically, and I'm I'm an invited guest most years. I have been the last six. I'm Trevor. I'm Trevor. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Dragon Con is basically Mardi Gras, prom, and absolute epic cosplay rolled into one. It's a 100% done fan run convention. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple, there are multiple programming tracks. I talk on the science track. There's a space track, Doctor Who. Um, (gasps) What? Yeah, there's a Doctor Who track, all that. But here's the thing. Oh, there you go. Right on. Yep, there's there's an entire programming track about Doctor Who. There's an entire Star Trek programming track as well, a Star Wars track, filk singing, cosplay, all of that. The thing is, it's entirely fan run. And the level of talent, like I'm I'm just a talking head there, but we're talking about all of Star Trek The Next Generation uh, cast showed up one year. Stop it. Um, uh, uh all uh, the uh carol the the guy that plays big bird that played big bird unfortunately he passed recently uh he was there um the henson the henson puppeteering group shows up we're talking like major next level shit these are epic people that and here's the thing i could have talked about the new dark crystal series with them yep yep Ah! the thing about dragon con is that it's entirely fan run so the media presence isn't there you'll have marvel stars there but you won't have marvel with a booth you won't have marvel ruining hall h at san diego comic Con. where is it it's in atlanta georgia labor day weekend i would like to go you should totally (laughs) try and go but they dragon con is epic yeah dragon con for right now is still happening that I know of. I haven't gotten, I'm, I've been accepted as a, as a guest again this year for the science track. It's totally your jam. It would absolutely be your jam. And honestly, it's the best. uh, My boyfriend likes star Wars because he worked for George Lucas or uh, whatever. Then he should, he should fucking apply to be a, uh, uh, an attending professional or somebody to talk on one of the things. And that's the thing. If you're a guest or an attending professional, you talk on panels. A Paul like, easily I, could do that because he worked like, for George Lucas for years, like through all of the prequels and, he, and Indiana Jones. He, you should totally do Dragon Con. And Dragon Con is in Atlanta, takes place over uh, three or four days over Labor Day weekend, yeah. the, the beginning of September. It takes over all of downtown Atlanta. Really? Five hotels, a convention center, multiple floors of a convention center, multiple ancillary hotels, and they have their own fucking parade. Jesus. We're talking 80,000 people descend upon Atlanta, and it is literally like nerdy grawl. Oh, that would be so much fun. We're essentially just taking over this stream to like have like a chat about things that we do. All right. Thank you. Who else is asking questions? (laughs) There's still so more. (laughs) There's more. Keep it going. Keep it going. I got nothing to do. (laughs) Josh, Josh Brown says at take that earth says hi, Trev. So take that Earth and take that Darwin and um, uh, take that. Oh fuck! I I can never remember, but he's the um, he's the uh, uh, homeopathy guy. The take that crew on Twitter mm. is hardcore. What they do is they troll the darkest depths of Twitter to come up with all the conspiracy theories, all of the bullshit, and they retweet them to their followers specifically to combat science denial. These guys are these guys, these women, all of them, they're in the fucking shit 
every fucking day. And take that earth is the flat earth uh, part. That of, must be a cesspool. Oh, it's a total cesspool, but it's hysterically funny because fuck. If you thought Reddit was bad with some of the shit people post, I mean, Twitter is horrific. If you thought Shannon and, Q's Twitter was bad. <laughs> but yeah, the the Take That Crew on, big shout out to the Take That Crew on Twitter. That was all started by Take That Darwin. Mm -hmm. And he's, them. yeah, and he started off a long time ago all about, he's just like, oh, people that are complaining about evolution cool and then you had theory fail which was going after all the people that would say oh evolution is just a theory and then that spawned a movement there's take that vaccines take that earth take that the the homeopathy one it's it's the um whatever the the six x ten to the yeah um there there's fuck Take that! I think there's a take that democracy, take that <laughs> socialism. There's like take that fucking everybody, and it's this diehard group, all volunteers, all combating science denial cool. and bringing it out in the open, bringing all these little fuckers that are hiding in the shadows in the corner and all that, and ridiculing and debating the living shit out of them. And my hat goes if I was wearing one, my hat fucking goes off to them all the time because they are in the shit constantly. Awesome. Yeah, follow, follow, the, follow, take that earth, take that Darwin theory, fail the whole group. They all follow each other. So it's really easy to just run down the line and go click, 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 click. Cool. Yeah. I follow take that Darwin for sure. I didn't know there was that many mm -hmm. more. So very cool. I'll do huge, that. Huge, huge group. At, at least fucking 20 of them, if not more. I'll go find them. Awesome. Yeah. It's the, the take that crew. All right. Chadwick. Hi, Chadwick. Uh, says, I found some of that hashtag Starbucks money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, layman. I know who layman is. Hi, dinosaur bones are sculpted rocks planted in the earth by by the deep state to disrupt the will of God. Repent, repent. He doesn't mean it. He's I know. <laughs> he was the guy that I sarcastically on Twitter went, I'm going to rip your worldview apart. Yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was, he's actually I, I from was... Nova Scotia too. <laughs> oh, right on. Yeah, he is. He's from, yeah, he's from right Nova, so Nova Scotia strong. Nova Scotia strong. We had another bad day today, so we, yep, could, we could all use a laugh. So, yes, thank you for that. Um, the next one is from Buck Melanoma again. Does Dr does Joe Rogan smell like Dakar? I don't know what Dakar is. Dakar is a horrible, horrible fucking men's cologne. Oh. Uh, but no, that. he smells like weed. <laughs> that checks out. <laughs> the whole fucking studio reeks of weed. And we have one more was, super chat. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. Go. It's just it totally reeks of weed. I was so happy when I was drunk when I showed up and when I was drunk or when I left. Yeah, I don't smoke weed either. People think people Me neither. Think I, yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, I can't do it. It makes me weird and like I don't feel like I have my faculties around me. Like I've had three drinks and I already feel a little bit like that's probably enough. <laughs> <laughs> for now like if i want to speak cogently like if i want to have fun i could probably do more but if i want to still be able to form sentences like that'll do <laughs> that'll do for now all right so the last one is neil the 604 atheist i need trevor on my show neil's great he does deconversion stories i don't know if you have one uh but if you do no. i i oh were you always an atheist i'm not i'm not actually an atheist i'm an apatheist i don't uh, care what do you oh okay yeah. So uh, apatheism, apatheism, some in the hardline atheist community is called a practical atheist. It's like, no, it's not. Uh, apatheism is I do not. It has absolutely zero bearing religion or atheism. Both sides of the thing has zero bearing on me. The only time I ever speak up mm -hmm. against religion is when they're specifically on an impact with science. Right. I, th you know, religion does help people. Yes, it can be extremist, it can be demeaning, it can be, it reduces rights, but that's the only time I speak up is when religion comes out of the church and start impacting people's rights, impacting science and stuff like that. I honestly don't care. My father was a Southern Methodist or Baptist, I think. My mother was Jewish. Mm -hmm. I occasionally lighter menorah when I remember um, and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it has zero bearing on me or, or anything like that. Um, I applaud the atheist community for what they do, and they go after uh, people like Ken Ham and all that because they're directly impacting science and spreading pseudoscience and all that. But then I also see there are a lot of hardline atheists that are very extremist and very problematic as well. I agree. Um, I tend to be very, because I'm an apatheist, 
I'm I'm very middle. I it's not that I I neither uh, confirm or deny the existence of a superior being or, or a supreme being or anything like that. I honestly just don't care. It's um, I used to know who came up with it. It was like an obscure French philosophy that uh, uh, that came out when it was first done. And it's not like the fucking Bill Maher apathy is bullshit that he does that. No, he's mm -hmm. he's he's more of a bulldog than anything. But yeah, I just I don't I don't waste the time, my own time doing that. I have a but massive do, do collection. Do you feel of like that associates with the label atheist? That's what's interesting to me. And I've had this conversation with a few other people because I feel as though atheism is like a belief position. And a lot of people are hesitant to affiliate themselves with a label as a belief position because they think it imbues them with a position of action, which is one of the reasons that I chose to be an atheist activist. Because previously there had been so many people who, when you look at like the like the prevalent culture when it comes to atheist activism, mm -hmm. that were people you would not want to be identified with. People that you were like, I don't want people to think of an atheist and think of that and then think of me in that same group. Right. When right. really it's a belief position. Mm -hmm. However, it's belief position that hasn't been represented publicly in um, respect in a respectable way mm -hmm. a lot because a lot of people are afraid to adopt the label because it hasn't yeah. been presented. So respectable people who hold that belief position are afraid to actually adopt the label because the, uh, the people who have owned that label on our behalf have done a poor job of representing us. So the more of us that do a better job of representing us, the better chance we have of actually owning that label instead of them. Oh, absolutely. That's and I do I agree with it. that. Uh, but for me, it's not its not a matter of belief. It's not a matter of knowledge. You just really I don't care. <laughs> I really honestly you just, really just do not a give fuck. a shit. No, <laughs> right. I do not That's care. That's fair. And um, and yeah, I mean, I know the I know the differences between atheism and theism, and gnostic and agnostic, and all do. that. One one is a knowledge base, one is a belief base, one is all of that. Mm -hmm. I understand agnostic atheists and all of that. That I totally get. I just don't care. I literally, okay. I am completely just nope. Don't whatever. Care. I have yeah, I have very religious friends. I have very atheist friends. Um, same. I even talk to him at the same time. And yeah, I just honestly- Because of course you I, can. Why yeah. shouldn't you be able to? Yeah, I'm a paleontologist. I'm yeah. a science generalist. I'm I'm a Cicerone. Everything else, I'm like, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. It, honestly, I just don't care about it. But I will step up and become an ally immediately when things like LGBTQIA plus rights are, are fought against, um, when there's pseudoscience is being spread, when women's rights are being uh, taken away, when women's rights of choosing are being taken away and all that. Mm. And I understand that we are not a society that was based on religion, but on the, on the concept of the true first amendment of freedom of religion and the separation of church and church and state. Mm. Uh, also being an American as well as Canadian. I, I get all that, but I don't worship, nor do I actively not worship. Because yeah. I don't care and I don't got the time. Yeah. And it's no I mean, business I've, but yours, what you believe in. Yeah. I, I took a 10 day religious trip to Israel and it was amazing. And I mainly went there to look at the, you know, just to look at the aspects of religion. And I was treated like shit because here I am, you know, I was wearing a kippa and I was at the wall and I'm walking into the, you know, where, uh, I'm sorry. um, the Hasids keep uh, keep their uh, keep their scrolls locked in these arcs and all that, and I'm literally being yelled at because of my tattoos and everything. I'm sorry. I I don't uh, eh, I I didn't care. I'm like, okay, well, you have no idea that I am technically Jewish thanks to my mom, mm -hmm. and well, that's your own problem, man. I'm not being problematic toward you. Because that's your whole deal. Your whole job is to research the Torah and it's to, you know, and to um, figure out what is going on in this religion right on. I'm here to check things out. Why are you yelling at me? Right. And the same thing with atheists. I have people that come after me that go, why aren't you more, you know, why aren't you more angry about this, that, the other thing? I'm like, because that does not directly impact me or the rights of others or the science of people. Yeah. I don't give a flying rat's ass 
I think it's immoral and illogical and horrific that people like Joel Osteen get all this money from their uh, from their their flock, as it were. But I'm more concerned about the jackass that's completely skirting pandemic rules and exposing his entire congregation to possibly fucking asymmetric, uh, asymptomatic uh, coronavirus carriers. I'm more worried about that guy, Joel Osteen. He's just a money grubbing grifter. I don't give a shit. It doesn't directly impact me until You're more he worried speaks about up the against the behaviors something. that people utilize belief to justify. Exactly. Yeah. Belief is a powerful thing and it has helped many, many people. Mm -hmm. It's it, it helped my grandparents. They were firm believers, all that. And cool. If that helps you and that helps your community, more power to you. The only thing is, hey, think that there are other people in the community that don't necessarily want to get involved and that there's this thing called science hanging around showing that, you know, the world's a lot older than 6,000 years. That's why I'm confused as an atheist. Uh, people confuse me of being an atheist because I go after Ken Ham and all that. But he's directly impacting the study of the geologic record. Yes. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Fuck Bodhi. Fuck all those guys. Yeah. All of that. Fucking um, Hovind and oh, <laughs> Dr. Dan. Um, all that bullshit. That is direct. That That's impacting me directly as a paleontologist. That's why I bite to that. That's why I fight that. But I don't I don't care that my neighbor is an Eastern Orthodox, you know, uh, Russian. I, I don't care. Yeah, that I don't think does most not people do. bother me. No, I mean, I've been to Seder's, I've been to, you know, Passover Seder, I've done Shabbat, I've done all that. I've gone to huge, massive Catholic weddings. I've taken communion. Me too. Big fucking deal. It's not, it's not that big of a problem until it begins on impacting on rights of people that want to be free from religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I support the FFRF, absolutely. I also support a separation of church and state and the true meaning of the First Amendment, where it is, you know, the freedom of religion, where that is tantamount. That doesn't mean you're stopped from going and worshiping God in a church. Oh, my the God, pandemic. of course not. No one would ever want that. No. Yeah, that means, you know, please have your religion. Just do it safely so you're not infecting a bunch of people. It's common fucking sense. Yeah. And yeah, and like, sorry, atheist community, but I'm an apatheist. I'll be your ally, but don't get mad at me when I'm also an ally of other things, of other religions that are peaceful, of other religions that are spiritual, of other ways of thought that, sure, they have 63 quazillion fucking gods and all that, but big deal. Yeah, because I think, like, I think to most, athe most atheists, at least generally reasonable ones... Oh yeah, most and of well, them are tolerant and reasonable. Absolutely, right. of course. Like it's it's your your right to swing your fist ends at my nose, sort of reasoning mm -hmm. for the most part. Right, and of course you have the right to swing your fist. However, once my nose or anybody else's nose doesn't even need to be my right. nose. Once a nose comes in right. the way, then you don't have rights anymore. But yeah, I'm yeah. Yeah, I'm very middle of the road on a lot of things. I'm I'm fiscally conservative. I'm progressively social. Yeah, uh, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm one of the terrible centrists. Everybody, oh god. <gasps> um, <laughs> um, but I'm but when it comes to like alt right and fucking all that, oh, I'm first in line to fucking. fucking <laughs> I watched it. I am so <laughs> first in line. Yeah, and. You know, and stuff like that, because these it's it's extremism I have a problem with in both sides of the field. We could talk about this for like hours. This is hours. a whole separate yeah. topic. Maybe yeah. we can come back later at some other time when we're both a little more prepared to talk about that. Sure. If people yeah. are interested in it and obviously they will be. And if they aren't, right. we could probably just do it anyway, because <laughs> I like talking to you. Um, so. Why don't you, for anybody who just came in, I'm sorry people just sent more Super Chats. I do, we've already been going for almost three hours. I have to <laughs> pee very badly and also go to bed because I have to work in the morning. So yeah. I appreciate your Super You're Chats. You're essential. Lucky and, you. And I thank you. I thank you so much. Please forgive me for, for not reading them because I, I, I can't go for another 45 minutes because I'll die of exhaustion. And I've, Trevor's just already Just ask her me. on Twitter. Just ask me on Twitter, yes. And thank you for the donation. I appreciate you. So this is why I'm like, if you, people donate, sometimes they're running out of time. 
<sighs> Trevor, tell everybody where you, who you are and where they can find you before we leave. Uh, one more time. I am Trevor Valley. I am a pain, paleontologist and science generalist. You can find me online at, at tattoos and bones on both Twitter and Instagram. And if you, if you head over to Instagram, uh, I just posted two new videos. Uh, one is kind of like a love letter to uh, the Mars 2020 and JPL and all that. And the other one, it's a new series I'm starting. I'm posting now that I figured out all this. Um, oh, shit. The, uh, the, you the, figured the it link out. Of, <laughs> you know, the link of this video just went live on my phone. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, anyway, um, on, on Instagram, at Tattoos and Bones. Um, I'm starting to post videos of all my nerd night talks. So the latest one that I just put up was that's not a fucking dinosaur. This <laughs> is of paleontology. And uh, I'm going to be putting up uh, some more in the uh, coming days and weeks. So yeah, once again, at tattoos and bones on uh, Twitter and Instagram. And yeah, other than that, that's where you can find me. I don't, I don't have Facebook or TikTok or Cora or any of that shit. And I don't have a YouTube channel. Sorry. But right. yeah. So if you want to do that, that's me. I highly recommend you going and finding him. I'm going to put up my end screen. People can still hear us, but they cannot see us because oh. I am an incredibly professional YouTuber who doesn't have an end scroll to play or music. <laughs> and I would like to let everybody who's still been here after almost three hours know that we appreciate you because it's it's been a dredge. It's been a dredge. And also... If you learned anything, it's utilize source methodology. Go yeah. advocate for your own understanding. And as always, help elevate the discourse. Bye, guys.